Hello, everyone, and welcome to the World Series of Board Gaming's coverage on the grand semifinal of Gaia Project. The winner of this game will head on into the finals. My name is Chris George, and I have with me an esteemed guest, the runner-up from 2022, the Gaia Project 2022 champion, also made the final table in 2023. The accolades just keep pouring down. Uh, we have Cliff Flash, Cliff Flaxenhair here to commentate this game with me. And man, oh man, am I excited to have you here, Cliff, because you are you are a Gaia Project pro, and this is a complicated game. There's a lot going on, and uh, and it's going to be a fun semifinal to watch. It'll be fun to see how these guys interact with a game that they mm -hmm. haven't played much yeah and i'm excited to get into it yeah me too i i love this is why i love the format and this is something you experienced you had to play ticket to ride a little less complicated than gaia project but i know that you stayed up overnight and played like eight or nine games going into ticket to ride which then you won and headed on into the finals uh of dune imperium in 2022 uh and so these players had a slightly higher learning curve potentially <laughs> It's absolutely true. I think one of my favorite things about the World Series, though, is how many people are available and helpful when you're learning a game the night before. You get drawn at between 9 and 11 o'clock. You know, OK, I'm playing this thing tomorrow. Maybe you don't know it very well. I hadn't played Ticket to Ride in a decade. And yeah. the community of board gamers that are so helpful and friendly uh, that, that want to pass on their knowledge about the thing they showed up to play and maybe they got second or maybe they didn't quite win but they they're excited to impart some knowledge was unbelievably helpful for me i definitely tried to pay that forward this year with some dune imperium and and unfortunately the people i tried to help did not win so i didn't do as good a job as the people who helped me uh but yeah then i logged on and and played as much ticket to ride as i could yeah uh, I, w I went to bed about three in the morning i woke up at five in the morning and played some more uh you know once you're in that semifinal you want to do whatever you can to make the final so yeah to because the finals the, the money table the finals for for all the glory and you're able to walk home with ten thousand dollars which is indeed indeed not, very not, fortunate not a bad takeaway for just playing board games <laughs> yeah it was a ton of fun i i highly recommend it if you love playing board games uh we'd love to see it at the wsbg it's a it is a great community and so hopefully these guys got a lot of help the night before uh, learning Gaia Project. I know I talked to at least a couple of them uh, with just quick tips, but Gaia Project is such a big game. It's one of yeah. the ones that's very difficult to impart yeah. all the knowledge they're going to need the night before, especially on an asymmetrical game where you're not going to know your setup. It's it's impossible to be like, well, you should play this faction. That's that's going to work well for you. Yeah, it's, There's not really a way to give them the information that's going to set them up for guaranteed success so we'll see what they were able to learn and and how they're able to apply it yeah I, i'm excited i'm excited to get into it uh, before we do if you're interested in coming to wsbg and participating and seeing how you do seeing how you play seeing if you could make it to that semi-final game or maybe impart some of your knowledge to some of the the semi-finalists uh we have a coupon code, a code that's gonna get you $50 off, which is expiring in like two days. It finishes April 1st, so this is what it's all about. You could win your share of $100,000 in cash and prizes just for playing board games. The World Series of Board Gaming is back and bigger than ever. High level play, friendly competition, national championships, there's no other event of its kind. Are you the next big name in board gaming? Get your tickets now at WSBGVegas.com and use the code IMN to save yourself up to 50 bucks. What are you waiting for? It's time to get in the game. So use that code IMN to get 50 bucks off. That expires April 1st, and I want you to be able to get money off your ticket. That's a board game. That's that's a board game that you can, you can purchase. You've saved a board game. You've earned a board game. Uh, <laughs> you can add to your collection, but I know this is going to be a long, a long one. So let's get over and let's meet our players in true WSBG semifinal fashion. In seat one, we have McKeel, who is our Dune Imperium WSBG 2023 champion. This was McKeel's first time at the event. And uh, he's coming in. Uh, McKeel also commentated on the Terraforming Mars final. If you missed that, you can check that out on Dice Tower as well. You see McKeel showing off his ring in true Super Bowl fashion. 
Uh, and then in seat two, we have the Splendor Mastermind, Vlado. Uh, Vlado was able to take it out in Splendor. I'm just so, you know what? I'm so, I'm so jazzed to be able to give, give these, these champions their intros. Uh, Vlado brings his Splendor. I saw Vlado mapping out the board, examining the tiles before the night before, and he seemed, he seemed okay. He seemed, he's like, I kind of know Gaia, so he was excited to take, to take his. Uh, his chances. In seat three, we have William Spear, who is our ticket to ride at WSBG 2023 champion. Uh, William also made it into the Acquire final table as well. Uh, a two-time final tableist for this year. Uh, he's, and I think he's final table ticket to ride last year. Yeah, he was. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. Uh, and then finally, we have Angela, our Castles of Burgundy champion. Uh, this was Angela's first time at WSBG, but also Angela Games with uh, third place uh, of WSBG 2022, Brent Checklin. Uh, so maybe some of that uh, final table will rub off on Angela. Uh, we don't know. We don't know who makes it to the final table because this is happening live right now and definitely not months after the event <laughs> uh, and so, so here we are they're setting up the board we hear our our judge josh um giving some examples and and will be very helpful in terms of helping the players reminding them of certain rules uh, as we move forward so angela in seat four the way the WSPG format works, uh, the boards one, two, three, and four are guaranteed to be in the middle. And then the other six boards come out randomly around that. Then the seat four player has the option or the control over spinning all the boards in any direction they want uh, to try and make it as fair of a play field as possible. Because if mm -hmm. you're in seat four, you're going to get fourth pick of faction. So you want to make sure that there's four factions that are, are reasonably playable. I don't know if she's finished her setup yet or if she's still going to spin some more. It looks like they just kind of random them out there and maybe she's fine with yeah. that. I think and I think then, she, she will spin it a little bit more, but I think she's just pausing as, as the other like rules get, get explained. That makes sense. So what we have here is all the asymmetrical stuff comes out. There's a, a random federation put at the top of the terraforming track. Uh, each of the six rounds is going to have different point values so we're getting those out right now the past tiles are going to come out randomly and this is why gaia project is such an interesting game and a different mm -hmm. game every time we're going to talk about this one a bunch here for the next few hours yeah but everything you learn from this is going to be really helpful hopefully and then also may or may not apply <laughs> at all based on the next game you play that comes out what these guys are going to be working on is buildings, total buildings, and buildings in federation. So those are going to be two different things. The buildings you federate with and then the buildings you just build anywhere are going to be the in-game scoring conditions that they have. That's an interesting combo. Hey, like it, they, they kind of feel very synergistic. Sometimes sometimes they won't be. And so we'll see just people going whole hog for the buildings rather than... Uh, yeah, than, I think expansion is going to be key here. You're yeah. going to want to be able to get out as many buildings as possible. So there's some factions that are very good at that, and there's some factions that like to build up instead of build wide. Mm -hmm. And you're going to want to be a build wide faction. Uh, the other things we have that came out while Angela spins the board, and we'll we'll assess the board after she's done. Mm -hmm. But on turn one, building big buildings for five points. Most factions want to build either a big science institute or, or their PI on turn one. Yeah. So that is a huge synergy. You're going to get an extra five points for doing that. It also looks like they have the pass tile for big buildings. So if you build a big building in turn one and then you pass that tile, you're going to get nine points plus the benefit of building a big building right away. Yeah. So that is an extremely strong opening round for someone. And charge four is really good on turn one as well for most of the factions. Then it looks like we have build mines anywhere. Obviously, that's going to synergize with mm -hmm. trying to get as many buildings out as you can yeah so if you want to build up a big building turn one and then build a bunch of mines on turn two that's going to be a lot of point potential yeah and it looks like we have move up the tech tracks mm -hmm. is going to be round three so every time you move up a tech track you get two points so you want to set yourself up for that 
And for those uh, unfamiliar with Gaia Project, we are going around the semicircle, sort of starting from six o'clock and up to twelve o'clock. That's uh, rounds one to six. They will each have a, a bonus for yes. for the round. That's the that's what we're talking about right now. In the circle where there's a bunch of different color planets, which is going to be a helpful tool as well mm -hmm. for identifying who can get to which color planets well once they pick a faction. And mm -hmm. then Chris, can you see what's on round four there for the? It's it's a, a bit it's a bit it difficult yeah it's a bit difficult to get on on my screen as well. Um, it, I'm not sure if it is the trading posts or not. Yeah, I believe it's trading posts for three points. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think that's correct. That's what that's what I would that's what I would say. That's what it kind of looks like the the shape of them. The trading posts being the the sort of secondary building that you upgrade your mines into. And then after that is mines on green planets. So we generally, you can turn your purple transdim planets into green planets is a, a, a thing factions and people can do by moving up the purple Gaia track there on their tech track. Mm -hmm. And then you get points for building mines on the green planets. So generally, there's a few different ways to get points out of that. In this game, it's really going to be turn, turn five looks like just about it. So Gaia planets and green planets. Green planets are great for expansion when you're talking about buildings and federation and buildings just yeah. in total. Uh, but there's not as many benefits for, say, a uh, Terrans or a uh, normal Gaia forming faction, they're not going to get as many benefits as they usually would because there's not a lot of points out there for them. It also looks like the build on green planets tile is in the green tech track, which gets you mm -hmm. QICs. Those help with range or taking public actions. And so that's, uh, that's not a great track for most of the terraforming factions. So it's uh, going to be tough to get your points from green planets in this game. Yeah. And then in the last round, just like the first round, we have build your two, your three possible big buildings for five points. And so those are the, the points that you can get each round for doing those effects. Mm -hmm. And that's not the, not a bad thing to have in round six, eh? For for the science, the, your final science, big science building, you can maybe use that to get your your second or third federation. Uh, you, it, and you, you yeah, can if, build that big building on round six, and you can use it to be a science building. You can take the seven point tile, which is in a wild card spot, to move up any of the tracks. So there's some good synergies possible there. Yeah, it feels it feels like a very generous board for uh, for for newer newer Gaia players. Hey, it in terms does. Of, it guides you a bit in the way that that the the flow of the game wants to be led. It, it, things have kind of come out in a way that that really support that. Uh, but Angela's not doing them any favors as the most experienced Gaia Project player out there. She has spun these tiles, in my opinion, very well. There is no obvious dominant faction yeah and she probably understands that her opponents because she played in the gaia project uh ring event uh she did she didn't go all the way but she i believe won around oh wow and knows what she's doing in gaia project and so i think she's probably practiced spinning before that's just a guess yeah and i think she's done a great job here of there's every faction is i guess viable but none of them are dominant. Nobody, you know, everybody has planets on the edge of the board somewhere. N nobody has a, a obvious, I should take this faction. It's mm -hmm. clearly amazing. And so that's going to put Mikhail in a tough spot here with his first faction pick, which is what they're doing now. They're going to go around in seat order and pick the factions that they want to play. We should assess as well at the top of each of the tech tracks mm -hmm. is advanced tech tiles. And I think a basic idea or understanding of Gaia Project is make federations. You, I, If I make federations, I'm scoring points, I'm getting free resources, I'm doing a good job. That's going to help me. Looks like he has taken Taclons here in seat one. Taclons are one of my personal favorite factions, a very mm -hmm. strong faction. I do not like their board setup here. I think Angela has has made them a right. very difficult faction to play. They love being next to other people and getting a lot of charge off of that to charge their power stone for more efficient resources. And I don't see their positioning being centralized enough. So we will see if he's able to 
kind of leech on to wherever uh, anybody else picks and what other factions get picked. In seat one, I generally like to take the Ivets. Mm -hmm. I like some things about this board for Ivets. Again, she did a great job spinning, so nothing's amazing. But with Ivets, you don't have to put your PI down. And maybe the only weakness of going first is that you have to put the first mine on the board. Right. If you're Ivets, you get to see where everybody places and you get to go where you want to go. So I really like the options you have if you're the Ivet player. In, in an early seat. And that's the red uh, player pieces as well. Yes, right? yeah, the yeah. red the red pieces if somebody picks that. Looking at the board though, I love knowledge. You have the knowledge and money is in the wild card spot, different color planets. You're gonna wanna be on a lot of planets with buildings and buildings and fed is in a wild card spot. Mm -hmm. And the big buildings are worth four strength instead of three. That makes your federations much easier to make. Now, right. what you want to do with federations, instead of just make a bunch of federations, even though, of course, that is great because it's points and resources, but it's how do you convert those federation points into a lot more points? Which advanced tech tracks are you going to get to the top of to generate more points in this game? And again, if I'm building a lot of buildings at the top of the knowledge, the blue track, there's two points per sector you're in. If you're in mm -hmm. 10 different sectors, that's a 20 point tile. You're talking about an average advanced tech tile that's good scoring you between eight and 12. So if you've got a full 20 from that, it would be a, a very big bump. And there's only a few factions that can run up that blue track efficiently. If it's is one of those factions, of course, yeah. they're, they're build all their federations in one big blob. So they're unlikely to get on 10 sectors. But they're still okay to get on five to seven, which still makes that tile pay out pretty well. Uh, so I would really look at Ivets here to take Ivets and move up the blue track. And it looks like Vlad it does. Looks take like yeah, Ivets. Vlado takes Ivets. He he's listening to you. He's listening <laughs> to you, <laughs> to to your to your knowledge. That, um, that's what I would go for from that seat. I would yeah. I would take Ivets and I would be looking to go up the blue track as fast as possible because the great thing about Ivets is that they can move up any track pretty efficiently, but they don't need the range track like a lot of other people. The navigation track, which is the right. second dark blue track, is not as important for them as it is for a lot of other factions. And so they can kind of spend those early turns moving up the knowledge track. And then that's gonna pay off in round three if he's able to do that, because round three pays you points for moving up tech tracks. So if I have a bunch of knowledge, I'm gonna be able to move up more tech tracks yeah. by turn three. And then I'm gonna run up, if I'm the Ivets, I'm gonna run up the terraforming track so I can spread out as much as possible. Now, Ivets are not gonna win buildings and buildings and fed most of the time they they're being in one big blob is not going to be able to do that so they're going to need to subsidize those points somewhere else and if you're getting a big tech tile push at the top of different tracks and you're using your federations uh efficiently then that's fine i think mm -hmm. a lot of people get really stuck on i have to win the end game goals that's right. kind of all that matters but the great thing about gaia project is there's so many ways to score points that you want to be doing everything well and efficiently, but you a lot of people want to spend more resources than the points they're generating out of those resources are worth. Yeah. So if I win most buildings by spending 12 extra points of resources to build that last building, and all I made was three to six points for winning that, yeah. I, I lost points on that exchange. And I think people get caught up on that. That's a that's a great point because those tech tracks like you were talking about and and I'd love to have you run through um, for those for those of us who will will take will scale it a little bit back for anybody who's tuning in who may not be as familiar with Gaia Project and we'll just go through the the benefits of each one of those tech tracks from from the bottom of the screen up with the brown uh, but but knowing that just getting above that that sort of middle black line that that's four points every time so if you can just even get a little bump on those getting that that end game goal coming in first or second suddenly doesn't doesn't mean that much right um and so every yeah. tech track does something when you move up it so you mm -hmm. get some benefit when you move up moving up the tech tracks is is always good but can be more efficient based on where you're going right so so the first tech track that we that we move up it gets you your sort of white cubes the ore which i will inevitably call workers since i've played a lot more terra mystica than i have gaia project uh but but uh one of the one of the awesome parts about gaia project i think is is the tech track and how it's been really expanded from terra mystica 
Um, and so that just gives you the ability to to expand more, right? Yes, yeah. So you, you get immediately, you get two ore if you go step one. And then every time you want to terraform a planet that's not your color, mm -hmm. it's more resources. It costs you more. It's more expensive. That brown track will make that expensive cost less and less the higher you go up it. So as we talked about earlier, where the end game goals and the turns one through six goals are, and there's a bunch of planets circling around it right in front of our judge, Josh's hands, you can see all the different color planets. Oh, and William takes Terrans, Terrans? here, yeah. which will be an interesting, I like the Terrans. They need to usually go up navigation and Gaia project, and he's gonna wanna get that build on green planets for points. So they mm -hmm. are a strong faction. Their board presence is decent, uh, but there's not a lot of things that score for green here. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. And so we'll go back to the brown track here. You mm -hmm. get on the different colors and where Josh is putting the resources out and you can see the planets. The planet that's your color is very easy for you to get on if you can get the range to them. Uh, the planet's right next to your color. So for example, blue is right next to red and white. So those are easier for blue to get on, but blue has a very difficult time getting on yellow or brown planets. Mm -hmm. And so the brown track allows you to get on other color planets efficiently and easier than normally you would be able to. At the start of the game, it's it's almost impossible to get on a, a planet that's opposite from yours. It's very, right. very difficult. And, and, and really not advised too, because you have to spend so many resources. Exactly. So that's the track that works on that. That helps you expand. It's going to be an important track with the end game go goals that they have this time. The next track is the navigation track. When you immediately move up that, you don't actually go any further. So right now, everybody's got a range of one, mm -hmm. which means next to wherever they have a building on the board, they can build more stuff. But very rarely are buildings or are planets that you can colonize immediately adjacent. So you're going to want to go up that range track to get more range and so you get a qic first which helps with range and distance and then at level two you get range two then eventually if you go all the way to the top you can get a free mine and range four so you can get a free building and range four so four is the farthest you can go without spending green cubes or qic's uh, angela pretty quickly took the xenos here they yeah. start with an extra uh, QIC. So everybody in this game is going to start with one. Most of the factions start with one, but the Xenos here, the yellow faction, they start up on our next track, which is the green track, and that's where you get QIC. So QIC can be used for multiple things. It can be used for range, and then there's public action boards or actions on the right side of the main player board there. They're little green hexes, yep. and you can take your green cubes and spend those for efficient point actions there. You can retap a federation. You can score points equal to the different color planets you're on, plus three, or you can take extra tech tiles. So in this game, if somebody, especially like Angela, who's playing Xenos, or Ivitz from Vlad, who uh, makes the free QIC every turn, if they can expand into a bunch of different colors and then tap that three times throughout the game, that's a bunch of extra points. So that's a very important track, probably just for those two factions. Mm -hmm. The Taclons could go up it, and the Terrans are almost certainly step one up it to get their three points for building on green. But I think the Ivets and the Xenos could race for those tracks. Uh, the purple track is the Gaia track. You can see the Terrans start with one level of uh, Gaia at the start of the game. Mm -hmm. That means they get one Gaia former. You need a Gaia former to turn a purple transdim planet green, and then you can colonize it. So if you do some work, you can move up that track, and then you can get multiple Gaia formers. You can get up to three Gaia formers you can place out at a time. Uh, Gaia forming is, is one of the most difficult parts of the game, probably. But if you are good at it, can make you a lot more real estate and a lot more space to play with. Yeah. So we have, and then you have the economy and the knowledge track. These are essentially free resources you get every income phase. So we know we're going to have six income phases and you're not going to move up any of the tracks before the first income phase because it's the first thing that happens. So the earlier you go up an income track, obviously the more efficient that is. You yeah. 
get more of the benefit if I move up the knowledge track on turn five I'm only going to get that bonus once so the blue one is the knowledge which you use knowledge to move up tech tracks again so it's kind of a you get a small benefit now but over the course of the game it really pays off and then the economy track which is the orange track makes you money or and power charge and those are pretty much the other types of resources in the game that you can spend to build buildings and expand your network you can see above every uh, player's player board, there is a little number track, and you can see how they're keeping track of that knowledge in their blue marker, the ore in the white marker, and then their money. They have two little circles for the money. You can have up to 30 money because the track goes up to 15. That's your maximum. And so at the top of each of those tech tracks, there's advanced tech tiles, and that's when the board comes out. That's what I'm looking at for I'm going to get feds, right? The point mm -hmm. of the game is I'm going to make hopefully at least three federations. That's your bare minimum. Yeah. And I want to flip all three of those federations into additional points. So one of the most appealing tiles is going to be the five points per federation when you take that tech tile. Because that's at the top of navigation in a game where everybody needs to spread out, yeah. I would not fight for that as hard because it's going to have a lot of competition. Right. We're seeing them put their initial mines out. Angela's special faction or special ability for the Xenos is they're going to start with a third mine, probably something she thought about. But what, before she spun the board, you can see a chunky yellow planets that string together mm -hmm. with a green in the middle. Uh, I think she knew what she was planning to pick here when she saw buildings and buildings and fed. And yeah. she picked a faction that automatically starts with extra. The three of them also have a little charging circle down in the bottom middle, which is gonna make the Taclons happy because they love to charge. Yeah. Uh, but I don't see where he's gonna go from there. And in a game where you need to expand, I think the other players may be thinking it's fine to charge him because he's a little stuck. So we'll see where he's able to put his second mine. Yeah, uh, the Angela Taclons do hurt. feel really far, far from each other, like almost compared to, to, all, to all the planets possibilities out there taclons feel feel tough to get to it's your next ones difficult yes yeah very difficult but if he gets enough charge then he might be able to utilize his power stone to make free qic's and get out of there i generally like to go up the econ track with them although at the top of econ is uh, five money in a QIC. You really want your advanced tech to be points, in my opinion. Yeah. So the top of green, whenever you move up tech, get more points. That could be really good if, if it's we're able to string blue, green, and brown tech tracks together. That would be a ton of points. That would be a, a difficult goal, but if they were able to do it, it'd be amazing. Right. And the Xenos might go up that track as well, although they don't produce knowledge better than most factions at the top of the terraforming track where there's also probably going to be some competition is four points for every trading post mm -hmm. you have when you take that tile so that's a potential 16 points for each of the factions so essentially navigation terraforming and brown and then the blue track of the knowledge are where yeah. most of your advanced tech points are William, as the Terrence player is almost certainly going to get to the top of the Gaia track now once you're at level four, everybody can move up that far, but only one player can be at the fifth level on a tech track. So only one player can get all the way to the top. And those are usually pretty big bonuses. If if the Terrans don't have competition, and I don't see why they would have much competition for Gaia forming in this game, that should be a lot of points for him that's pretty locked in. Mm -hmm. I and really another... do like the Terrans on this board. I, I, I really like the the yellow as well, but I I, I see that, that quick Terran the, the only three spaces apart near the top of the board also sitting next to that to that white planet and uh, a transdem area and I, he's got this cluster in the bottom yeah. left which the brown player really wants to get all the way onto tile six to get to that yeah brown planet and and absorb all the charges but it is quite a distance for him to go yeah uh, but yes the the blue has a good expansion network they should be William should be set up here to expand his his Terran empire well. The Terran struggles, what's difficult for them is to produce enough knowledge to be competitive on the endgame scoring for the tech tracks. Mm. And so that's probably a place that he'll have to figure out how to generate points on. A lot of times Terrans won't make enough points on the tech tracks to 
be competitive in that area. Right. You just want to, you don't have to make a ton. You just need to make enough to compete. So if he gets to the top of navigation first and he gets to the top of Gaia, that should really be good enough for him if he gets everything else done. I expect him to build his Planetary Institute on turn one and get that extra five point bonus. I don't know which pass tile he's thinking about taking, but Angela's almost certainly going to take the free Terraform. That's almost always the first pass tile that gets taken and she's yeah. in seat four. So if I was William, I would take the big buildings, pass for extra points and the charge four. That would move all his purple chips from zone three into zone two which is where Terran's like, well, where everybody kind of likes them. And that means every charge he gets moving forward will, will put resources into zone three, which is where they can be converted into resources. So that's where they want to be. They, they don't really want to be in zone one. That's another strength the Ivets have. And a lot of people like to terraform or Gaia form with the Ivets. And depending on where Vlad puts his PI here, if he puts it next to that brown, next to a bunch of trans dim, he might decide he wants to go Gaia forming. A lot of people I play with like to Gaia form with the Ivets, but it is not my favorite move because I like to launch my purple chips. They're the one faction that doesn't need their power as satellites. So you can get much more efficient charges if you just send off all the extra ones and and just keep four or five in your bowls and then every time somebody charges you those are making you points those are making you resources if you have to keep six to gaia form and then you have to keep another four to mm -hmm. charge now you're sitting on a lot of stuff you're getting a lot of charges that you're paying for that are not as efficient in my opinion yeah the 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 charging with the power, uh, the the tweak is with the Gaia forming, right, from Ter Terra Mystica. But but often you'll see in Terra Mystica people just get rid of all their power as quickly as possible so that they can have a very small circle that that they need to to charge up to activate those very strong purple abilities that are on that um, the right bottom right corner of the of that main tech track board where players will be claiming those abilities. I was I was sidetracked when you were talking about the the power charging because i was curious about mikhail's uh placement as taclons on the right side of the systems uh i but it feels nice for uh both uh taclons and terran to have those planets to to go for that nobody's really fighting for so the, so the taclons will will be probably trying to expand to the to the dark black planets and the terrans expanding to those white planets because uh it's it's less competition than uh than trying to edge out other people of their home systems but it could be the other way what do you, what do you think about people's placements so far well i think you can see vlad struggling because i think he was planning mm -hmm. to go on top on sector what is that seven sector seven there because that's almost always a free fed for for ivets and i think mickey l messed him up by, yeah. by going on the brown planet there. He probably didn't want a friend, especially someone trying to steal his charge because right. Mikhail can immediately jump into one of his greens. And if Vlad goes over there and that green gets taken, he's really stuck on the corner of the board. The way that if it's expand yeah. is kind of one at a time. And that's a very strong starting position. So I think he was planning to go there and that second mine placement of Taclons, which I certainly didn't see coming either. That's mm -hmm. a very off the beaten path and I think he's going there expecting the Ivets to be there. And if they're not, that's kind of a dead mind for him now. Yeah. Uh, and now now Vlad is in the middle next to a bunch of Transdom. Like I said, not my favorite place to be. Uh, but we'll see if he's able to expand from there enough to get everything he needs done. Mm -hmm. Angela takes the past tile immediately for a free dig. That means she can go on. So we look at the board again. Yellow is next to brown and orange she's already immediately next to an orange on the yeah. left side so she can just jump onto that i think she was expecting to have a friend over there so while she has a lot of space to expand upgrading when you don't have any friends nearby is a lot more expensive in this game yeah and so she has nobody over there and there's a lot of space for her to build mines and inevitably someone will get over there eventually you expect but how much she's willing to invest in that is interesting she still snaps up the free terraform so she can get on a brown or an orange very quickly. If she gets on a brown, that's going to be devastating for the Taclons. They're already in a tough position board-wise. Uh, 
so if you spend a QIC and move to the brown right next to the ivets on the right side, yeah, he he would be very cut off early. Yeah, uh, and would I have don't to think depend that makes... on those Gaia form uh, on the green planets, and I guess moving up to that to that black planet on uh, uh, gener on number seven. Right. I I don't think it makes enough sense for her to do it, but if I was Mikhail right now, I'd be very concerned that she would decide to do it. William does take the pass for four on big buildings. Uh -huh. I expect him to go straight into his PI. That's a great building for the Terrans. If you're not aware, their PI, while it's on the board, whenever they put their power into their Gaia, which is how you make your transdim planets green and he starts with a Gaia former and he's next to one at range one already and nobody else can do it so he's pretty much locked in to have six tokens over there already mm -hmm. when your pi is in play when those tokens dump out of your Gaia form they turn into resources so it's a very big strength i do not like this past tile pickup from vlad here i do like them being in the knowledge game i really mm -hmm. like i said i think that's the way to go but the knowledge and or here on income when there is uh, a, a QIC and then the Taclons are going to take the QIC. I think that was a missed opportunity there. They, Like I said, they make a lot of QIC already. They're going to need the range to get out of their, yeah. their kind of stuck opening. So we'll see how he's planning to get out of there. Maybe he thinks the two they make are going to be enough, and they might be. Uh, but I would not have wanted the Taclons to get a second QIC there in the income phase because that allows them to jump onto the green planets that I would want if I was playing the Ivets. Now, now the Ivets have already, having already built that big building, the PI, Planetary Institute, right? That's what it stands for? Yes, yes. Um, and they won't get the benefit of those five points for building uh, right. it during this first age as well, which is something considered but they do have that that strong ability and and, and strong start yeah and it, and generally an ivet player can build a big science institute on turn one uh if it, but they need friends so right. i kind of expect him to jump to spend a qic to jump down to the red uh planet on tile zero four and right. that will be right next to the blue player he probably he goes before blue so he could do that before blue upgrades and try and incentivize william the blue terran player to build down there but it there's a charging circle in the bottom middle i think everybody's going to upgrade down there the taclons certainly are going to upgrade down there first the yeah. other place they don't have any friends and they want to get maximum charge when everybody else upgrades so <laughs> Uh, yeah, for the, I think Vlad's for, opening position definitely got messed up by Mikiel dropping yeah. his his mine where he did. Now, for for those of you who are following at home, uh, it's a little bit the the numbers are upside down. They are in the middle of each of the tiles, but they're upside down. So if uh, for for most of them, except for number nine, it seems, uh, just in terms of how the tiles were spun. Um, but from the top left, we have nine, four, ten, and then in the middle we have. I'm not quite sure. That should be five. That should be five. Yeah, it's it's kind of spun. Five, three, two, and seven. And then we have uh, six, one, and eight on that bottom row. Just so for when we reference galaxies, that's how you can uh, quickly key in to, to which sector we're, we're talking about. And we can see already that Angela's on a bunch of different sectors. So mm -hmm. if if she's got interest in, in going up the knowledge track, that's a tough track for the Xenos to go up on. We'll see. It'll be interesting for me to see which uh, which tracks these, these players decide to go up on. I really only feel comfortable saying William will go navigation and, right. and Gaia because that's just what Terrans are going to do. Uh, everybody else has a lot more play of what they can do. And so it'll be interesting, especially for me with Vlad, which tracks he decides to invest in, and Angela with Xenos, what tracks she decides to invest in. Mm -hmm. uh, I like, I like what they're, I like the opening look of pretty much everybody but Taclons here. Not to not to try and pick on Mikhail at all. Uh, I just, I thought when he picked this faction, there's not a lot of room for yeah. him. And I think he's looking at that now. I think somebody probably helped him the night before and was like, look, this is a strong faction. And that's yeah. absolutely true. Tackle the other thing that's very difficult for him is 
they almost always, the first tech tile they're going to take is the charge four tile. And that's in the worst spot for Taclons as a Gaia forming. They want to get rid of as many purple chips as possible so they can wheel that power stone. So the power stone is a three purple chip wrapped into one piece. Mm -hmm. And that's the advantage the Taclons have. So they don't want a lot of a lot of power in their pools. They want to charge that one a bunch. I also want to point out that you're seeing some awesome sportsmanship from Angela at the top here, helping the other players who haven't played as much, giving them a lot of information about how their factions work. Uh, she was a great sportsman throughout all the events. And I saw her in Castles of Burgundy and I saw her in Gaia Project. And then in the semifinal, she was so friendly. All the other players told me how nice she was and how much she helped them. Even though they are playing to go to the final table, she was helping them learn the game and that's the community you talk about with the board gaming community yeah and so very just shout out to her on that very friendly very nice uh and i, because, I really appreciate that yeah because angela definitely has the most experience at this game in terms of talking about players experience um but everybody here earns their spot as a good board gamer right mckeel but mckeel and vlado they they both they both didn't seem they they felt I think a little bit scared to tackle Gaia Project because it is such a such a beast of a game. But I think they've both had some experience with it, uh, and and I know William I think is the least experienced around this table. Uh, I think he's only played it a couple times. Uh, so I I knew I know William was taking a long time deciding between the Terrans and what looked to be the Itars or the other um, or the Nevles. Uh, I think he was the deciding. Nebulous would have been great for the yeah. for the blue track, and I love ITARs. I I think I think instead of Taclons, if we had ITARs in this game, uh, that that would be stronger. I think Angela yeah. was probably looking for that if she set up like I think she did for the yellow faction, because if she was able to to put the other players in white, blue, red, they're all fighting for each other on planets, right. and she's got yellow, orange, and and brown almost to herself. I wonder if she was if she was setting that up or not, but uh, but no ITARs here on a, on a not terrible ITARs board is is surprising to me. I think I think there's some possibility ITARs could have been good. So I think I like both the things William was was looking mm -hmm. at for sure. Yeah, which is great for for someone who's only played a couple a couple of turns. Obviously, probably again received some support the night before. Um, I that's. That's I think it's my favorite part, having seen it twice now at the at both events, seeing the, feeling the energy of the night before and feeling that support like you were talking about and, and seeing everybody just like trying to help everybody else be the best that they can be and learn the game. It's like a wonderful representation of of the community, of the board gaming hobby, right? Like that's Absolutely. that's what you want to see. I've been I've been to a lot of different stuff, right? Magic tournaments and different other tournaments for a bunch of different things, sports, whatever. Nothing compares to the board gaming community because you're competing and you're trying to win at whatever these things are, but there's no edge to being mean or rude and the the yeah. community and the players are so friendly. Oh, Vlad spending both his QIC right away to move up to take that planted away from Mikael and he wow. looks disappointed already. I think he knew that was a planet he really wanted to be on. So that is that is early on some quick fighting. Wow. Uh, Vlad, Vlad's playing two ore here instead of two money. So we'll see. Uh, it should be two money and one ore for the mine instead of the and Angela gets it corrected right away. She's on top of everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's 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 great. And again, again, that's that's a that's again that 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 spirit, right? We saw this as well in the Brass Birmingham semifinal, where Luca, uh, who who came in second in the in 2022's Brass Birmingham uh, championship, was was drafted into Brass Birmingham, and I saw Luca being like, no, 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 you want to do those actions in the in the opposite way, like it's more efficient this way. And like, th it, that's that's mind blowing. It's mind blowing. In you wouldn't see that in any other sort of tournament. I don't think I have it. Exactly, exactly. You, you don't have to do those things, but it it's great to see. And I've seen it across so many different games from so many of the different players that just get it. They understand that this is a tournament and it's a competition, and you want to be successful. And also, you can do it 
and help your fellow players like playing board games as a community it's a fun thing you want to have fun when you play so we're seeing angela use her free dig here already and she has run across the board and gotten even more involved so now she was only getting charges from taclons but she's run across and she's on a a new orange planet so she's on a different color and that's that's going to pay off big because that thing is going to get charged like crazy all of william's expansion is going to charge it yeah. it's even easier for her to get to the next yellow planet now that's one qic away she's got a network you know already a very strong start yeah on two turns in she's got four buildings uh, and two color planets so that's a good start i like a lot of what i'm seeing there uh as far as picking up and so the xenos the other thing they have when they build their planetary institute their big pi building they make federations for six uh, instead of the normal seven strength of buildings you need right. so if she gets the big buildings are worth four also you can build federations with them for two what That's i huge. would yeah what i would do in this game because there's no need for her to race depending on which track she goes up on if she needs a federation early she might build that pi earlier but if she can wait until turn six and build that pi when she gets the extra big points for it and then also make all her federations on that last round that's going to be a ton of points in the last round so she could really play to that if if that's what she's thinking Lots of options early, which is certainly strong. William's getting all that charge we talked about. So he's got a ton of power in his pool three because he took the charge four tile. That's amazing. Uh, And we've got Mikhail making a small science building, which is going to get him a tech track or get him a tech tile. Whenever you get a tech tile, you move up on the corresponding tech track. So he is going to take that charge four. And again, Taclon's on Gaia forming, it is a, a building game, so it's going to have some expansion to it. But we'll see if this is if this is an efficient move for him or not. He is pretty stuck, so honestly, I don't hate it as much as I yeah. normally would for a Taclon, because he he probably needs the Gaia formers. And if I'm William, I hate every part of that. I don't right. I don't <laughs> like the Taclons being involved in my Gaia game at all. <laughs> Especially if Vlad is the Ivet player decides he wants to Gaia form on a game where there's not a lot of Gaia forming going on, that would be that would be very difficult for for the Terran player. Yeah, so Vlad, I think yeah, oh, it, it's ahead. it's tough for it's really tough for McKeel's spot. I think I think Vlad's Vlad's really slick play. He he said, you know what? I wanted to start in that sector. I wanted to start over there. I I lost that opportunity because of Taclon's placement, but it's not going to stop me from getting that federation where I wanted it and like I made that so. push right away. Yeah. And he, yeah. he let him have the two QICs, which I think he might kick himself for because now he's put his, he's already spent his two. So mm-hmm. he's put a satellite next to a red planet. Great. And next to a green planet, which he can't get on at the exact moment because he doesn't have a QIC to spend to get on it. And Mikhail has two QIC, so he can jump over to that green planet and steal it right away from Vlad. So they are definitely both in each other's way here. Yeah. I think if Vlad had taken the pass tile to snipe that QIC, he'd be in a much better spot, and, and Mikhail would be in even a worse spot. So we'll see how it transpires. But I would guess that Mikhail is going to feel like he needs to jump over to the green planet pretty yeah. quickly i would and, i would say that as his his expansion target as well because you also have that black planet which is easier for him to to expand to he can then hit that yellow planet up there also an easier expansion for taclons and at least get some sort of network going before needing to to run down into that middle brown space if he wants to continue that expansion from there completely agree absolutely correct and so here we're seeing the first public action taken uh, William's going to take the money here with four of his power to, I I generally like the ore a little better than the money early, just because you can convert any number of power into one money at a time mm-hmm. and you can convert uh, 
into or if you have three in there. So, but you know, he's probably got a plan. He understands what he's, what he's thinking more than I do at this exact moment. Generally early part of the game is stocking resources and, and figuring out, you know, where I'm going to spend these efficiently, but more resources is certainly more better. Yeah. You got Angela building a trading post next to William here. I think William opted not to charge. I think if William William might be kicking himself for, for that timing. The timing of the charge is so important, is. right? It because if, really if William important. hadn't done that, he would have been able to to push two more two more Probably charge into that second top action yeah. exactly yeah our second uh, public action and nobody else was really sitting in a position to spend it mm -hmm. and so he might have been able to get both you can get the ore and the money in the in the first round both of them that's really good of course again Mikhail could launch a purple chip and put the power stone into three but now that he's into gaia forming he's also incentivized to keep extra power so difficult on both ends for sure for him taclons here and they're certainly they're going to want to charge four before they put six power into the gaia zone so we will see but i agree with you that that angela sniped on that again she was like oh you just spent all your power and you Perfect. you would have to pay a point to charge these things you're clearly putting in your in your gaia dish yeah well sure i'll build next to you right now Already, right. he, already, I feel the need to play copious amounts of Gaia Project. <laughs> Watching these games, I just get so excited. And he is going to launch, and then he's going to take the single terraform action. So the action that Angela had, there is one of those available for three power on the public mm -hmm. board. So he's doing the same thing, and he's spending a QIC to jump there giving Angela a charge and expanding his network, kind of connecting them up a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, getting that brown planet in range moving forward. So he decides to not take that green planet we were talking about and, yeah. and build along the edge. He's going to cut across the middle instead with his two, two QIC. Uh, and we'll just see how that ends up transpiring overall. He does not have enough power now to put his Gaia former out without spending the power stone. And mm -hmm. so he's on the very edge of, do I want to spend all of my chips? And then if someone charges me, I don't even get to charge the power stone. You can always convert ore into power into purple chips. Mm -hmm. If you, if you need to early in the game, that would be a, a very desperate move. I, I don't expect him to do that. I think he's probably going to put the power stone into the Gaia zone. And well, he also Vlad... still has his charge four ability that he got from yes. his textile. So he'll be able to capitalize at least on something else before he needs to do that. That's true. If he can get two ore out of that, that would be that would be nice. He could also take a double dig, which would get him into orange. You know, that's in range now. Yeah. So he does have some options. He he's working out of his his pinched opener a little bit here, which you you like to see that. Yeah. Oh, and he's gonna get a charge, so never sad about getting some charge when you're attack on and for those terra mystica players uh because i i always have a strange relationship with with charging because i know in terra mystica you have to be right beside the the building but here you just need to be close enough to the to the building through the galaxy right in terms of range the two rules, the yeah, range two two he within two hexes within two hexes which makes sense so, because there's all that open space in the great right. galaxy of Gaia. <laughs> and so Vlad knows he can't take the green right now because he doesn't have a QIC. He would mm -hmm. really like to. I, you know, I, honestly, I might have thrown three power away if I was him and just made a QIC as a free action and built on that green. I, I would not want anyone else on my green. That's essentially a free fed if you lock in those three planets mm -hmm. as a... As a, but he he might be reading correctly that McKeel doesn't seem to be interested in it. McKeel seems to be going the other way. And so uh, maybe he's... McKeel knows he's a bit pinched in and probably going around the outside of the board maybe doesn't feel as great for McKeel. And so he's he might be reading that, that he might be going for that orange like you were talking about with the double dig. Um, oh, and McKeel's going to get some more charge here as the PI goes in. Uh, we'll make sh Hopefully William gets his five points for building a big building. 
because uh, that's a big a big reason mm -hmm. that all of this happened we'll we'll see hopefully josh will get that there i think he's pointing at it now making sure everybody understands yeah. how it's happening and then a lot of charge everybody kind of saw you kind of know that terrans are going to build a pi uh yeah especially with how he picked past tiles and everything that was going on and so if you know that you want to be next to where that place is going to be especially yeah. if you're pack lines. but angela saw it right away jumped down there use her dig and a qic and she's going to get the two or action which is a strong action uh xenos aren't like a great power faction uh but she gets that right away so that's mm -hmm. very strong probably right before the taclons were going to take it i think the taclons may have didn't know for they're charging yeah. yeah well i don't i don't fully know what the thought process behind that was uh i think it's because, common yeah. to play a if lot of board games yeah. and value your points especially we know he's a, a dune imperium winner that's a 10 yeah. point game you, you should be winning Gaia Project at 170 to 190 is generally a, a normal winning score, and 200 plus is is a strong score. Mm -hmm. And again, we'll see if the players get to that kind of point scoring or not. Usually there's more pass tiles for points than we have in this game. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess there's only one missing. The, the mines one is missing, but that's usually a strong one. Uh, the trading post pass for points is is rarely utilized efficiently, and then the the science building pass for, for points is different levels of successful. Yeah. Based on the action that's picking it up. So he's a little resource starved here. We've only got one ore left for him. He hasn't spent his knowledge. Looks like he's going to do that now. And let's see where he decides he wants to go. He is going to go up on the econ track. That makes sense. Feeling that, feeling that crunch, feeling that uh, starvation. Yeah, he's he's hurting on resources. It's also great. That's again, awesome. the reason I love it with Taclons is because you get charge from that track. And mm -hmm. all I want to do when I'm in the Taclons is run that Power Stone in as many circles as I can. You know, it wants yeah. to make as many laps as, as I can possibly have it do. And so that gives me charge. I love that track for them. It synergizes really well. So Vlad's thinking now he can build certainly another mine on, on his red planet there. He could even upgrade it if he felt like it. Uh, he's got a few options. He's also got to decide which track he wants to commit to and work on. And how did Vlad build that satellite? It, is that just an action to build? A... So, yeah, the P, the Planetary Institute that the, that the if it start with is they have a personal action they can take uh on their own board where they can place a satellite and they can do that once every turn Got so he it. gets a free satellite and for the ivets normally your satellites do not help you measure range but that specific space station satellite measures range as well so he's within one of that space Great. so he he's within range to get on all those planets from it and there william's got to be sad i would be super <laughs> disappointed as a as a Terran player here seeing another player on a weak Gaia forming game go into Gaia forming. That is just not what you want to see from William's position here. Uh, I can totally get where Vlad's coming from. Like we said, when he put that PI down, yeah, there's a lot of expansion for him there. And in a game where you care about buildings, and I've seen this from a lot of really experienced Gaia Project players. Now, when I pick Ivets into a buildings game, I just accept that they're not going to win that. I just think to myself, you know right. what? It's not likely that I can get enough points. So I'm going to just sacrifice those and make up the points somewhere else. But he's going to fight for it. He's going to try and get as many buildings out there as he can. And... As I say, I, I've played with a lot of people who, who have a similar thought process. They want as many buildings as they can get, and that's going to, you know, turn into more federations within his giant federation hub. He won't have to go very far. But like I said, I liked, I liked knowledge and terraforming a lot here for him. 
And a nice little mini conversion happened just from William before putting his uh, his power over to Gaia for him. He said, "You know what? I'm going to sacrifice one so I can get I can get some money." Uh, he's already planning out his next turns, and then he optimizes moving those in level level three. I was I always call it level one, but I know it's level it goes three, two, one, uh, and then put them into Gaia form that uh, Transdem purple planet next to him down at the bottom on tile galaxy number one. And the great thing for Terrans is they all those chips, not only do they come out and make resources, but they come out of the Gaia and they go into bowl two instead of into the uh, mm -hmm. bowl one cheaper zone. So you're, you're, he turned all six of that power straight in from, from the lowest level into the second level. Yeah. Whereas when Mikael and Vlad get their power uh, from the Gaia, that'll all dump back into one. So it'll be a little less efficient for them. And of course, they won't get resources. Angela here picks up, builds her small science building, takes the four money tech tile. She has mm. no trading posts left. She wasn't going to make very much money. So she's kind of said, you know what? Over five turns of the game, I'm going to make 20 bucks and I'm going to get two or four right now. So that's, again, she's stuck in the resources. She's. Yeah. Uh, got great expansion, lots of resources. We haven't seen which track she really wants to compete on yet. Uh, if she wants to just keep going up that terraforming or if she's going to spend her knowledge somewhere else. Yeah, still holding that knowledge. I've, Vlad still has some knowledge, I believe, as well. Yes, yeah, I think and, so. Oh, no, no, Terrence he spent still... it. Didn't he spend it? To... No, he took the charge four tile, I see. Yeah, he built a science building. And that's why he's out of ore. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and they all have a charge four action. Or not all, but the the front two here, C one mm -hmm. and two, have a charge four action that they can take. Uh, I would I would probably spend my power stone for a free, probably an ore, but free something or other, and then charge four. Yeah, uh, since you can do you can do those conversion actions as free actions at at any time on your turn. Right, because pumping four into the level three that would give you seven, and that just feels like an awkward number, especially depending on the actions that are still left remaining on the board. You can still get some knowledge, though. How much does it cost for knowledge? Four? Four, yep, yep. Two knowledge, two ore, and seven money. The game considers all those the same value at four charge in on the public action, which is interesting because the game has slightly variations on all the federations with those same values. So if you get the federation for money, it's one less money over there with seven points. The ore is still two ore for seven points, and the knowledge gives you still two knowledge, but only six points. So the federations have a different uh, definition of value uh, than the public actions for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. The federations value the knowledge higher. And generally, you don't see the knowledge taken as early on turn one, but somebody usually snags it in a four-player four game. We'll see. Looks like that could be the Taclons here. And the two knowledge would be good for them because that would that stacked with the two they're making would rack them into uh, into four next turn, so they would get to move up on a tech track somewhere. You generally you want to be making four every turn if possible. Yeah. Uh, we're looking at Angela's board right now. She's got two knowledge, so it'd be good for her as well, but she's nowhere near enough charge to take a public action currently. Uh, she has enough resources, though, where she can turn into a big science building, and she can get the two knowledge one, and that would make her three knowledge, and then she can get a pass tile for the fourth. Yeah. So she could, she could get into really running up the tracks and get another tech tile, and building that big science building is worth, you know, five an points. extra five points yeah. this turn. I would guess that's what she's looking to do. The only downside of that plan for her is she's so expanded, which is great, but she's currently got her empty mine on the board. And I, I, if at all possible, I try and not have that empty mine on the board because it makes you nothing. If you turn yeah. it into a trading post, you're making three more dollars. So the empty mind being emphasized, you can see on her board uh, at the top part, which is the bottom of her board, her perspective, you can see there's a little hand on uh, on most of the spaces, but there is that empty space, which doesn't give her that additional ore resource. 
Exactly. Yeah. She, if she builds the big tile building, she could move up certain tech tracks, I suppose that would make her enough stuff, but probably not three money and two ore to make it into a trading post right now. Uh, there is a, a reasonable argument that making a trading post, your first level trading post only makes you three money. So if you're not going deeper into trading posts, if you're spending three money to build a trading post and then you're getting three money, that conversion, it, it mm -hmm. doesn't actually get you anything that turn. It has to be over future turns. But of course you have to build those trading posts at some point to build to them up into the next levels. So. What's uh, Xenos's uh, PI ability when they unlock their PI? So they get uh, Federation's cost six instead right, of the right. seven strength. So they, they will be six strength. They also don't generate a power like everybody else when they have it, but they generate a QIC, mm. which of course you can turn into a power if you just have to, right. but it's a much better thing. And then they charge four as well when they have that built. So. She is going to make the extra ore here with her QIC. She's going to spend six and six to make a big building. She is going to choose the knowledge one. William can choose to pay a point to charge two and move that purple chip to, to the spending zone. If he so desires, he's going to do it, looks like. And then she gets a tech tile. And this is going to be a, this is pretty much going to tell us what she's thinking, where she's yeah. going. Uh, which, which one she picks up. There you go. Knowledge. Goes for the wild. There you go. And then moves that's up a, on, that wild, on that knowledge that's track. That's a track that's amazing. So she's yeah. producing a lot of knowledge and money now yeah. over the course of the rest of the game. Or is going to be a little tough for her to come by. So she's going to want to get the public or actions uh, whenever possible. Because yeah. we're looking at her board here. She's only making the three or from the mines. She has no other or production. Almost certainly she can get a pass tile that makes her either a QIC or or. But I like it. I like a lot of stuff she got done in turn yeah. one. Yeah, it's and a she, really strong start. She, she could have easily thrown more mines out there. And again, I think she's thinking ahead there as well, where she's like, I'm going to build all my mines next turn. Yeah. Nobody's really in a position to steal them from me. I'm going to put all these mines on the board and make sure they're worth two points uh, as I throw them out there. So, and yeah, then she's, that'll fix. She's really benefited that William is the only person who's kind of in contention to to attack those those yellow planets who's right beside them, and uh, he it would take way too many resources for him to convert. Yeah, blue to get to yellow is is not a threat you would worry about. Uh, and then yeah, the only person who even two away from uh, I guess yeah, brown is one away from yellow, but he's just so out of position to cut her off. And then red, it would be a double dig and a ton of QIC. I mean, she's got those locked in. Well, I think Angela also has presence on that tile number one down in the bottom center beside brown there. I think that's where yes. she placed, yeah. Yep, yep, yeah, she opened there uh, for sure. So, yeah, she's going to expand into tile six almost certainly. And I think she's probably, she's happy with the charge for and pass for mm -hmm. points, big building, but I think she's gunning for the QIC would be my guess. Uh, she still hasn't spent her knowledge either though. So no. she can move up on any other tech track. Yeah. I think with the move she made and with knowing she's going to want to get the big building tech tile anyway, I would expect her to go up on the knowledge track again. Yeah, even though it, knowledge. even though it doesn't give her those immediate bonuses, like that feels like kind of one that you can you can wait on, because you're not uh, you're not forming things, or or it can help with the charging, I suppose. Does it impact the charging if somebody builds next to it? Uh, for which one are you saying? For for on the knowledge that the tactile track having all of your yeah. buildings be worth four, that doesn't impact the charging ability of them, does it? Oh, it does. Yeah, it, it makes does, them yeah. charge even more. Yeah. I, I'm not saying she... Yeah, you're definitely right. She's going to wait on taking that tech tile. I'm just saying she has four knowledge to spend, and I would expect her with the move she made to keep running up the blue oh, track. Oh, right. With of course. That. She wouldn't She wouldn't take the tech tile. She would just move up on the on Yeah, that just spend track. a four yeah. blue and move up. Yeah. Right, right. I would expect... I just that, it's but, Angela's Angela's drowning in tech tiles right now. I just assumed every move <laughs> she would make would give her another tech tile. <laughs> 
yeah, long term she's gonna get that for for that sure for yeah. size yeah. strength building for sure. And then it's gonna be, you know, two buildings are a federation, which is a little bit of a nombo in a you want lots of buildings, but if it, if she can just make a ton of federations, she's gonna yeah. be happy about it. So we've got Mikhail still kind of building up. Okay, he built a training post here, and we'll see if he can get another mine dropped. He still has a QIC, so we know he can, and so that mm -hmm. looks okay. What you don't want to do is you don't want to drop below two mines, if possible, on on turn one. You really want to get at least your three ore income. Mm -hmm. There goes the two knowledge. It's going to Vlad. A nice He's guess. In the same boat as pretty much everyone else he's he's gonna get but he's still wasting one knowledge from that tech past tile he, he took right at the beginning of the game i think uh but it, it does look like he's at eight knowledge if i'm counting that correctly which would get him two he's tech. Seven. is he at seven, yeah, he's at seven. Mm -hmm. yeah he he got he started at five oh, yeah. and now he just two so right. he's, he's that just zero seven. is a larger space it looks like it's Two spaces. <laughs> yeah, it looks like two spaces. That's true. Yeah, and he and he's making two next turn. Uh, so you know he's gonna have enough. But the one he got this round from the past tile just didn't matter. And it it will matter at some point. At some point he will spend it. Yeah. But it it could have been something else this turn. He's also out of ore, so he can't even drop a mine on the red planet this turn. That's gonna set him back. And this is a thing that. that I'll say that I love about Gaia Project that a lot of people don't like about Gaia Project. And that's when you make a mistake or you miss points. In most games, there's a catch-up mechanic. In most games, there's something you can do right. or a random card that comes out or you can draw from the deck or you can use a push-your-luck mechanic or whatever there is in board games. Yeah. And you can find an option for extra points. And in a lot of those games, you can miss also. But you have a shot in Gaia Project. If you miss points, if you make a mistake, if you are behind, you don't get it back. There is no right. catch-up mechanic. It is just move forward with what you have, and you will you will not get the game will not give you resources for being in last. You will not you know from heat for example. You will not move one space for being in the back. Right. You, you will just miss out on those things. So now we get to know where William's going to move up, and I would guess he's going to go navigation for the QIC. I don't think the three purple chips help him very much. There it is. Makes total sense to me. Angela spending her knowledge now, and we'll move up on the blue track as we discussed. Yeah. Really Perfect. solid, solid income generation from Angela. Something I, I've always found difficult or exciting as well to balance in Terra Mystica is the idea of balancing when do you get the resource generation and when do you get the points generation? Because in Terra Mystica, there's that, uh, there's that sci science tile, the tech tile, religion tile, whatever it's called, where you can get one point for every mine that you, that you build. And that's often like an auto buy. Uh, but as, as a... Uh, uh, an, a novice player, I, I ignored it because I was only focused on the resource generation, hoping that it would that it would yield points. And and seeing my opponents, you know, thrash me over the course of playing Terra Mystica a number of times, I realized its importance. Uh, do you find that there are any tactiles that are similar to here, like any traps that uh, any tactile traps that you can fall into? Uh, I would say that the seven point tile is the most similar as far as you're going to want to take that. Everybody's right. going to want it. You know, you're going to have free seven points is something everybody should get. And especially in this game when it's in a wild card position. Yeah. I think definitely we saw already one of the traps with the Taclons is they have to take a charge four, but they don't want to go up on a Gaia track. And so right. that can get you into trouble. So I think it's more part of the asymmetrical part of it where each faction has tiles they need same kind of thing with the Terrans. They, they're they going to need the green planet, gets them points. I would expect they need that anyway mm -hmm. at some point, probably next turn. And and he's going to move up. And getting a QIC is never bad. You're never sad about it. But it's yeah. not in the perfect position. He would, he would love it in a wild card or on navigation or on Gaia. 
Right. In fact, uh, him and Mickey L could probably agree to switch that and the charge for <laughs> and everybody and even Vlad, everybody would be happy about that. <laughs> Except for Angela. Except for Angela. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of a lot of play within the tech tiles. And then I think the advanced level of gameplay you're talking about in this one, it's the beyond different colors for knowledge mm -hmm. and, and synergizing that. And we'll see, it looks like Angela might be thinking the same thing I'm thinking where picking that up on turn three, if you're on four colors, let's say she's probably going to be on orange, green and yellow by then. Yeah. And maybe she'll snipe, snake a red or get something like that. If she can take a red away from Vlad's expansion down to four, He's he's gonna really be stuck on his on his right and middle tile and and not have a lot else going on. And she could snake a, a pretty easy brown uh, up in the left upper left quadrant too. It's only one. Yeah. It's only yeah, two that, away, right? And she doesn't ever she doesn't need to worry about that. But if yeah. she's taken that tech tile, and that is a strong one. So we see Mikhail pass here. But it's a good one to get on four colors by turn three because then whenever you move up attack track, you get extra points. Okay, now I'm taking this tile. It's going to give me enough knowledge to move up a tech track, and it's going to give me a tech track bump right when I take it. So that's a free four points for taking that tile. Almost certainly it's another eight points because you're going to move up on tracks you're getting to the high end on. So it's a deceptively large amount of points to take that tile on turn three. Uh, mm -hmm. But you have to set yourself up by being on different colors by then. And so far, she's done that well. And that tech tile that we're talking about, of course, is the middle wild tile as well. Yeah, yeah. Every color planet you're on generates you one knowledge immediately. Uh, and so Vlad is putting his Gaia former out, as, as it would be expected here. We're going to see... Did, yeah. And Mikhail passed without putting his Gaia Former out. So he unlocked the Gaia Former from taking the charge for. Yeah. And then he didn't put it out so that he could charge because he does get a little bit of charge from the income track. And mm -hmm. then did he take purple chips? He took the power generation tiles so that maybe he can he can uh, use make the Gaia Former more efficient in the future. I would, if I was going to do that, if that was the past tile I was going to take, I would definitely have spent my power to put the Gaia Former out and lock down an extra mine for myself, especially on a board where I'm so cut off. Oh, that's true, uh, because there's one right beside him. I was like, well, there there aren't too many transdems out there, but there is one directly south of him in the right yeah, side. Yeah, he, he's that got one. access to one this turn, and so he could have put it out, Yeah, and then he... And then if you're going to take the tile where you're getting purple chips, you can take those before you charge, which he's going to get that free charge from the income board. And since you can take that first, uh, and here's Angela getting either the green cube or the points tile yeah, for the big a, building. She has really her nice pick. Setup. So, and Vlado yeah. will, will have access to... It's interesting. Will, will Vlado take the terraforming or will Vlado take that green now? I, he makes a green for free because uh, that's just what the faction does. Mm -hmm. So I think I think he should take the... But he's got one more action. He's still got to spend his knowledge. Yeah, that's true. Uh, to move up somewhere. But he's, he's playing alone now. So he'll do that and then he'll take his uh, past tile. I, I think he should take the terraforming assuming there's any place he can use it efficiently. Um, yeah, he's looking for blue and orange. And Angela's already... Well, I was going to say Angela's know, already moved that orange. You know, the QIC might be better here. Because <laughs> he has to spend a QIC to get anywhere Yeah, he wants to go anyway. And he wants to spend that QIC to get that green on the right. I, I wouldn't wait too long on yeah. it if I was him. Wouldn't leave it uh, completely open for McKeel to to decide to go there. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't leave it too long. He Mikhail kept a green a QIC as well, uh, and he didn't. So I would have spent that if I was him. He didn't get on his brown planet next to Vlad's PI, and so he's only going to generate two or income from his mine mine row instead of dropping that extra mine and getting. And I'm sure what he's thinking is I'm going to drop that next turn for two points. I think I think just watching him, I didn't play any games with him 
the mm -hmm. World Series myself, but just watching him in this game, I think he's a player who really values points, values them very highly, and I can totally see where that would be super advantageous when you win a Dune Ring and when you are playing a lot of games like that. In Gaia Project, losing one point to charge two over the course of that game, that charge two is going to make you that point back. You're gonna yeah. you're gonna make more than that point was, and so I think that's just what. If if my read's correct, I think he's valuing these points a lot. He, he is a terraforming them. Mars player as well, where you do have the cards with negative points. Uh, he said, uh, I remember talking to him during the terraforming Mars commentary. He he said that was his gateway game, terraforming Mars. So he loves the space genre. Okay, okay, yeah, and I I could be wrong, but just my initial mm -hmm. read is is that it looks like to me that he is a. Uh, keeping a lot of his points and that's going to hurt him here he's going to get low resource yeah uh production and and it'll be difficult but we'll see we'll see if he's able to to you know he did he did get out of his little corners that i was worried about him in better mm -hmm. than i was expecting and people haven't totally cut him off you know we talked to angela could have done yeah. it vlad could have done it it wasn't efficient for them to do it so again angela with good sportsmanship here reminding him he has income from the board mm -hmm. now something interesting too looking at everybody's tech tiles both mikhail and vlado have uh, gotten gotten a tech tile angela has two getting a huge income bump and uh william with the terrans is sitting at no tech tiles do you find uh that's an that's often a spot that Terrans will be in. I yeah, I think so, especially if they go straight in. So they essentially have two openings. They can go mm -hmm. into their PI or they can go into a big science building and get the but what you can really factor in is that look at Angela's tactile, it's making her five money and a mm -hmm. knowledge. Uh William's PI when it dumps those six tokens out are gonna make right. him, you know, six resources six, yeah. of, of some value. So he doesn't have a tech tile sitting in front of him, but you can think of those as as a tech tile that you essentially are making some amount of income off of. Mm -hmm. And it's a little more versatile. It's like a wild card. He can he has so much money. So I'm gonna guess he's gonna make two or he can't make enough knowledge, which is a little disappointing for him on that regard, but he'll probably get enough charge and might be able to to get the two knowledge action from the board which would let him move up and be range two and being range two for him is awesome <laughs> there's mm -hmm. no doubt about it he can get yeah. the green planet down on six he can start putting gaia formers everywhere he can take the green on three angela probably has no qic right now yeah so she might beat him to one but i i doubt she'd beat him to two so getting two knowledge this turn for william would be highly advantageous and I would, I would expect him to do that. He took the science building generates uh, points as well, kind of making a tell that he's going right. to pick up a tile this turn. And we'll see if he's going for the, for the when you put a mine on a green planet. That's going to be tough then. He's not going to be on greens. Or he's not going to take the mines on greens this turn, which is a, a great time to get them out because mines are worth two points this turn, right? And if he yeah. if he did have that tile as well, they'd be worth five points. But I just don't know if he's going to have enough resources to do all of those things. So he's going to take the ore, and then he's going to take the ore again. Totally correct. One, two, three, four. He's got five ore. So if he builds into a science building, that's spending all the ore. It's two for the trading post, right? and then three for the science building. Assume... He's gonna move. Up, he's gonna take the green thing, build on green planets, gets three points, and then get a QIC from that. That QIC almost has to be ore, so that then you can build on the green planet. Yeah. You have your Gaia former on, so you can reinvest that Gaia former. So, his plan, his his turn may just play itself, and yeah. then at some point he'll get two charge. If he can get the two ore, then maybe he doesn't have to take the two knowledge. Uh, but every every turn you don't move up a tech track is is lost points. You're, right. You're, you know you're missing four points. So, well now he's not getting the ore. So. Yeah, McKeel comes out right out of the gate. Those those purple actions. I 
that's where I love a lot of the tension of both Terra Mystica and Gaia Project are because they're so valuable. They're so much more efficient than what you can do on your own. Last turn, I was trying to think of if there was any way for Vlado to be able to build a mine, but you know he wasn't able to get that that extra knowledge. But through converting through converting power, he wasn't able to to change out enough pow power into into ore. It uh, it's a, it's a very important battle to get those those purple purple actions when you need them and if and especially if you're banking on them for all of your plans to come into fruition <laughs> yeah absolutely. i find you often need that just like oh i just need those two or i just need that little bump of income and i can do so much well if angela takes the knowledge here she'll have two bumps this turn which she's uh, pushing power which and... she did there you go she knows it <laughs> she's, she's listening it. in <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that's good stuff right there. Those are good actions. You're totally right, though. Gaia Project is a, a race, and it's mm -hmm. a race to everything. Yeah. It's a race to get to the top of the track where you're trying to get points. It's a race to get to the buildings. Again, the thing I love about it that's so different than almost every other game, there is no fighting or, well, I have a big enough army and you're in my mm -hmm. way, so I can knock you out of the way. Like, once somebody's there... If they got there first, you can't get there. You're you're not gonna take their space. Yeah. And so getting places, everything's a race. You know, you're racing for the public actions, you're racing for the spots on the board everybody wants to be on, you're racing to get to the top of the tech tracks, uh, you're racing to spend your federations efficiently. There's only yeah. three of each type of federation. So you're you know, if your plans are banked around, well, I really need to get two or from a federation and everybody takes those right before you. It can be very difficult. But William did decide not to go with the build on the green planet for extra points. He just took the two points that the round is worth and got his Gaia former back. Mm -hmm. So he, he decided he did not want to essentially spend all of round two yeah. get, you, utilizing it to get that tech tile. And I understand that. That makes some sense. But as a Terran player, you need that tech tile as early as possible yeah uh it's a lot of points over the course of the game let's figure he's gonna have three gaia formers for turns five and six out there so you know that's 18 points and then two in the middle part of the game so that's another 12 points so 30 yeah. points and then one this turn would have been 33 points so you're talking about almost a, a significant of, of yeah. like a winning score that that we were talking about earlier in that 180 190 exactly area. exactly so it's it's difficult every time you have to build on a green without it um but he has the qic's he has a lot or he has a qic's and he can be ranged to this turn i think if he goes into a tech tile that bumps him up on that track so if he's going to go up the range track uh looks like he can really only take the income of an ore and a charge so I'm going to guess that's where he's going. Mikhail is spending all of his resources. Six or six money to get that science out. And he's building the big science building, giving a lot of charge to his opponents and not getting the five points for it this turn. Yeah. Uh, so this is essentially a lot of resources to make one more knowledge every turn and to get a tech tile right now. So we'll see where he decides he wants to keep moving up. Uh, you can't take the same tech tile again. So the Taclons would love to just take charge four <laughs> all the time. But yeah, they just take, it, take all four of the tiles that are there. Yeah. And charge 16 every turn. <laughs> that would be a fun variant. Uh, <laughs> but he's out of ore. So he almost has to move up on the terraforming track and get two back. I I, mm -hmm. I don't know where, where he's thinking, which one he's going to take. So he's going to get, that's a different version of taking two ore, I suppose. Yeah. If he takes a QIC and an ore, that's at least enough to build a mine, which he still wants to build a second mine. Uh, he, he would can get still build it. Income. Yeah. Yeah, he's still build it over next to Vlad. Now he made two power and, and it looks like he must have spent it because uh, unless he's got it stacked on top of itself. It, no, I, it I, yeah, I think, it, I think all of his powers in bowl number one. The bottom yeah. Board. So he's 
again would have to be down to putting the power stone in to put his Gaia Former out. That's not where you love to be. Uh, and he took two this turn, so he's he's spending it to cycle the power stone, which I love, but it just doesn't synergize with the Gaia Former. That's what we talked about before. Mm -hmm. And so I think he actually talked himself out of a good yeah. move into uh, this this play is I'm going to build a federation right away. I'm going to yeah. get a federation early, and that's going to solve my resource problem. But taking it's the other be one... going to a lot of satellites to to lay down to connect all yeah. of this stuff though uh maybe he maybe he's planning to get the orange one that's a double dig for him it would be yeah. a five five power if he could get some charge uh then he could then it's only two satellites mm -hmm. but yeah right now if he's going to the brown one that would be a four satellite certainly not something he can afford with now with uh, with that power uh with that power stone can you can you push it into bowl number three like you would push uh, an ordinary one by by just discarding another power? Yes, yeah, you absolutely. Yeah, yeah I think that's how he's he's lost some of his power here. Is he's yeah. he's pushed it, and then you can spend it. It's only a three while it's in bowl three, and it's only right. a three for purposes of generating free resources or taking public actions. So yeah. if, even if it's in bowl three, it can't be three satellites. Which would right. be, you know, which would be great at the end of a tack long game sometimes, but that that is not how it works. So he takes the strength four building here. We're gonna look at an early fed for him, uh, and then, like I said, you really want at least three. Three is kind of the minimum number of feds you're gonna want to make, and and so if he makes one in the middle there, where the other ones are gonna go, it's gonna be tough to find. He also. With taking the the initial plan he had, where he was taking an ore and a QIC, he could put another mine out, but he would have sat on two QIC again, which would have put the pressure back on Vlad to like, hey, do you want to pick up mm -hmm. your green planet? Because I can steal that at any time. What I do like about what Vlad has going on here is he has quite a few mines he can build on a turn where building mines is efficient. Uh, yeah. And he's got almost no competition down on sector 10 for his stuff down there. I would expect his satellite is going that way and he's going to expand into the green and go go down there. He, geez, mm -hmm. he might, he's getting so many greens. He may want to think about getting the build on green planets for three points. Right. Time. Although Vlad's, Vlad's ore is zero right well, now. Yeah, yeah so that's of, the, he yeah. can make a federation kind of whenever he wants. The, the if it's, Right. almost come with a federation built in but they they do struggle with or if there's a weakness to if it's and, and i've mm -hmm. said this before i do think they are the strongest faction just in a in a vacuum in but general. they don't start with any mines so they only make one or on turn one and right. if you don't put mines down and what we see here is he only had one or he had zero mines at the start of this round so he only made one or and then he used that to build a mine now you're really ore starved and or is you need ore for every one of the buildings right. so you you have a tough time working out of that situation if the if it's don't have their mines in play you want at least two down on turn one and then mm -hmm. i usually like to make a federation turn one with the ivets and take the ore federation and that kind of solves the ore problem and like i say they move up the terraforming track super efficiently that makes two ore if you yeah. get ore from your uh tactiles if you're taking the ore in a charge that makes them more so there's a lot of ways around their weakness there but they certainly don't start with much ore generation so it's something you have to play around or know about them william with a ton of charge again everybody mm -hmm. likes the terrans here uh, he's going to keep it this time. I think he might have learned from the from the first round not to spend yeah. it too early, especially because the things he would really be gunning for of the ore and the knowledge They're got taken gone. so fast. Yeah. So here comes Angela running up her tech tiles. She's going to get up the terraforming. If she goes up that again, which I would expect her to do, she's mm -hmm. going to get a free charge three, and then every planet will only cost one to terraform instead of the usual two or three penalty you're paying. 
And that means, again, she's going to get on a lot of different colors. That is scary. I, that is very scary for Angela's position on the board. I think <laughs> Angela it's having be already good. expanded so much going up that terrifying track. I, I would be very scared of, of Angela already. Yeah, it, it looks really good. She's got a lot of really good plans in motion. I think she's she's utilizing. I, I do find it interesting because I it's clear she identified how strong the blue track was. And she mm -hmm. saw, you know, especially if she gets on the sectors, you know, I wouldn't love that the Taclon player is following me up there, but he's not going to be on as many sectors. You know, maybe he's able to steal that tech tile from her, but I doubt it. She She's probably going to lock that in. And so she sees all the point potential. I find it fascinating that she decided to go with Xenos mm -hmm. uh, on this line of play because she had seat four and Nevlos was available. And the Nevlos are just a very strong uh, knowledge-based faction. They do really well on it. And so I think it she feels, decided... If yeah, it feels like yellow and white's placement, too, feel decently comparable. Yeah, certainly with with a blue player in the game, that was going to cut off some of her stuff. But but with brown in the game, yellow has that same argument. Mm -hmm. I guess gray was going to be more pinched than orange, yeah. also similar. So it kind of balances with having two and two beside each other, right? We talked about... Uh, her maybe hoping that Taclons would go like Itars or or or, or yeah. other white factions, and then having that freedom, and maybe she didn't want to give that freedom to McKeel as well. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. Certainly, I th I think she decided I want an extra a free green cube and uh, yeah and an extra mind to start the buildings game. I think that's what, and she's like, I can just do it with this faction. It's fine, yeah. you know, <laughs> no big deal. She also may, you know, there's there's 14 factions in Gaia Project. For right. someone to be an expert with everyone is is extremely unlikely. Right. So maybe she's just way more comfortable with Xenos. Maybe she's played them a lot more. Yeah. Understands how they function a lot better and and just felt comfortable like i can move up the knowledge tracks with these guys i can be on a lot of sectors i can be everywhere i need to be and definitely i think she foresaw that th that someone was going to play terrans and that mm -hmm. yellow is going to benefit the very most from all the stuff the terrans have to and want to do yeah the the, the blue and the yellow are going to be just friends throughout the game yeah and so Mikael is spending yeah. more resources to throw power stones around and probably getting an ore out of it, I would assume. But now, again, he, he doesn't have enough power to uh, put his Gaia form around. Yeah. So I think he just took the tile. I think he just decided, I want the charge for... And even though I have a Gaia former, I'm never going to use it. I think that's right. Yeah, I, it just feels like that charge four with the power stone is so important. And he's now he's now chipping away at his his power in the way that that Taclons love to do to to throw it around, right? And so he is building a mine. Vlad can spend a bunch to charge if he wants. Uh, so it's a big building. So it'd be a charge three for two points. Looks like he takes it. Yeah. Uh, I, I like that thing, moving everything into bowl too. That oh yeah, that feels oh, yeah, really good. good. Even even though he's probably putting a Gaia former out, yeah. like get your charge. Uh, yeah, no, nothing wrong with any part of that for sure. If you're not familiar with with Gaia Project as much, the strength or the size of the building is how much charge you get, and you just pay one point less than what it is. So in this case, it's a size three building, and so it costs two points because it's three charge for a size three building and one point less than the size is what it costs you to move the power around. So always the most efficient charging is two for one. One point for charge two uh, is very, very efficient. Of course, one free charge for zero is good uh, because you don't pay any points, but yeah. you're generally not getting anywhere with it. Uh, and the two for three is still good uh, early in the game you're taking your charges unless you're spending them immediately pretty much through turn four. Uh, you don't generally have to think about, should I take charge? Like if you're new to Gaia project, just take your charge. Like right. don't over, don't overthink unless you're like, yeah. I'm putting a Gaia former out next turn. 
Uh, so I, I don't want to take it because these are all going into the green section anyway. Take your charge. It's it's good. It's all it's all about building up those those resources, right? And being able to get those out there and and expanding your position. And the more resources you're able to to use your charges for your power for, likely the better. But I I've also hit that hit that point where I'm like, oh, I have to spend five points for these charges. Okay, there there will reach a, a point of diminishing returns. But especially in these like first rounds when you're ramping up your engine, it feels feels important and i missed it or didn't talk about it enough or show it william did end up doing what we said and get up to range two by taking the ore and the charge mm -hmm. tile uh which which i like he's uh he did it though where there weren't anybody around so he chose not to do it next to his pi where he would charge angela yeah and and help her in the charging way and essentially build an easier fed for himself he chose to pay the extra money to do it out in sector three to right. get the trading post and then build it there and so he he paid extra three dollars to build it out there and then took the took the science building which i find interesting i don't think that was necessary i think somebody's going to be i mean with a yellow planet and a green planet right next to him somebody is going to be almost certainly angel is going to be next to that so you could upgrade that later the only thought I could have is he chose to do that to not charge Angela. The yeah. problem with not charging people in this game is it never works because at some <laughs> point you have to upgrade those buildings. Like you're not yeah. going to just never upgrade it and be like, oh man, you came over here to get my charge and I'm cutting you out of it. It's just deciding when it's correct to give them the charge. And I think William's playing that really intelligently. Like he's thinking about it a lot, but I think it might hurt him more to spend that three than it cost Angela to not have her get that charge. Could be. I mean, w William, William being in the finals of Ticket to Ride and Acquire as well, like the, that sort of that that mindset as well as a player. This is what I love. I love seeing this in the format in terms of you can see the different. Like we were talking about McKeel and the Dune Imperium and holding onto points. I think in Acquire, you uh, board position is so important. And knowing where to where to expand and and where to place your things down, I think we're seeing William investing in his future federations instead of like pushing forward to to an immediate a, a more immediate federation down in the bottom. Absolutely, absolutely, good point. That's totally true. So here we go with Vlad jumping into an orange, taking the public action to dig. It's going to charge tackle on some, but he's not worried about that. Uh, I don't know. He's going to that one because he's trying to get on blue also, I think. And so he's, he's jumping over there. Uh, and then he's got access to blue, which, which is a, a planet he likes, but I would have probably for the exact same, all the same stuff, he could have gone to the orange. That's kind of all alone in sector four. Mm. He hasn't put a satellite out this round and then he could have put a satellite out and he could have gone on another red and it, it would cost him all the exact same amount of things. So I, I would have probably gone that way, but he, I think he's thinking, I like blue. I want to have some friends so I can build up these buildings better. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to be down in a corner alone. But for me, when you jump to that orange and then you build the satellite and then you build on that red, oh, look, there's a blue friend. Like, right. I can do it. So Mikhail is going to do the thing we discussed where he's he's spending an early federation. He's yeah, he did take the big building to make a federation early. And he's going to string those along the middle here. I don't see how he takes anything but or. But we'll see which one he values. He could take knowledge, I guess. And and that would give him a tech bump that he otherwise isn't going to get this turn. Are there four of each uh, federation tile, or are those limited to three? Three, three. of each federation, yeah. and and we have at the top of the terraforming track. It's random which one goes up there each time. So he's going to take knowledge, right. which costs himself a point. Uh, but moving up the tech tracks, you know, if he ends up making an extra four points out of it, could make up the difference. 
it's also an extra action you have to take and and certainly thinking about when you're passing versus the other players is a is a part of gaia project for getting the pass tiles that you right. find advantageous like yeah no one took the single dig this turn and then vlad ended up having to take the dig action from the board so right. it's like he spent three power that could have been an ore which he desperately needs uh but instead now he's sitting on a, a QIC and two money that aren't doing the things right. he maybe needs or wants as much. Again, he's he's I think he's playing with fire, not getting on that green planet on the right. He he can do it any time, and it's two <laughs> points this turn. And I, I would have no fear of Brown getting on my red planets, but I I just would not want to risk. Unless, unless, I mean, like he's seeing McKeel, though, that now that McKeel's made that federation, that he has seems nowhere like else the, to go. He has that's, nowhere else to go. Yeah. That's where he's going for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, so time, seen... time might be up for Vlad to, to hold on to that, to that green one, but maybe he's hoping to, to get again that, that ability to get points on green. Like we were saying, like he's got access to a lot of it. He does. He's got, he's done actually a better job than I thought he'd be able to with the initial placement of that PI, but it's because mm -hmm. it's, it's enabled by doing guy forming, which like I say, is just not how I would want to play my Ibits. Uh, interestingly though, if I was playing Ibits at the same table, Angela and I would be in a, in a real race, right? We would be scorching mm -hmm. up that blue track, trying to, to fight for getting to the top and we'd, and maybe it just it also depends on the player but if you establish a position of i'm moving up this and and only one of us can get the points out of it are you going to compete with them and try and and win the race or are you going to move up something else because someone else is there is a is a certainly a thing you have to think about in this game but i mean like in terms of in terms of uh mistakes or obvious mistakes being made throughout this game i think all these players have been playing quite well uh, for for being especially coming in with limited sleep i'm sure they've been play like like we talked about at the beginning i'm sure they stayed up very late i'm sure they're all running on fumes and this is the fifth day of a, <laughs> of a five day competition uh where they've been staying up late pretty consistently as well uh absolutely it's, it, it, it it's pretty impressive to me the caliber of all these players and how they're playing uh, based upon what I'm sure is their their mental and, and cognitive state. Angela mentioned at, afterwards, she's like, you know what? I, I think what helped me is that I'm a runner. And and that like, I she's like, I actually felt the, and I talked to Mikhail about this as well. He's like, yeah, you know, my best tip, eat your greenies, eat your greens and like fuel your body because you're going to need all that fuel to just think and process and, and make it through. Well, we know going in that these are high level players, that they're oh, yeah. good at playing games, that they know what they're doing. And so there's an expectation of, of good play and yeah. that they would come in prepared uh, to the game. I think there's certainly mistakes, but not like, oh, my gosh, how could Glaring. they do that? Yeah, 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 yeah you know yeah, what I for mean? Sure. Yeah, exactly. So like, there have so, been slight sort of uh, optimizations that we can see right. now. Yeah, in the moment they they have stumbled into. But I, I do like a lot of, I get the thought process but behind a lot of what they're doing and what the mm -hmm. different players are doing. And absolutely agree that the sleep aspect at the World Series is a is a big part of it. I, I There were a couple of people who won rings in the first couple of days and they were like, oh man, I'm so exhausted, but I, you know, I really want to do well the rest of the way. And I'm like, absolutely, you know, you came to play these games, you came to yeah. do stuff. But the biggest advice I can give anybody who who wins a ring already and just sleep, just make sure <laughs> that yeah. going into that final day, if you had to be up 24 hours straight, you could do it. Yeah. And that, that would be a, a big advantageous thing you could do for yourself. Because if you're well rested going into the final day, you're going to be able to make good decisions and think about things well. And it's very, very helpful because if you work, if you grind, I know we played Gaia Project until 2 a.m. on day one. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I was exhausted the rest of the week. That's that's how it goes. Uh, we got up the next morning at whatever, eight or nine for the for the ring ceremonies. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just it's a lot. And then you play, you know, I then play Castles of Burgundy all day, play through the rest of the week. By the fourth day, I was exhausted. 
Yeah. And uh, and then if you, I know, uh, right, we get a, a view of him here. Mikhail left, so right behind him is Yuka, who won brass. That was on the mm-hmm. last day, and it was the last tournament to finish, right? So he played brass yeah. all day, immediately got drawn into a semifinal, and had to learn a game he didn't know how to play. <laughs> yeah. Which is a behemoth in Arc Nova. So it's get your rest if you are if you have won a ring i know it sounds amazing to win multiple rings and you should certainly <laughs> do your best but if you've got one prepare you can win yourself one next year <laughs> yeah <laughs> you can buy yourself one with your uh with your cash prize <laughs> yeah i uh, i think and and people who did that and got a lot of rest i think they were in a a much better state on on the last day there mm-hmm uh, which helped a ton. So it looks like they've taken a small break at the table here to, to use mm-hmm. the restroom and and kind of reorganize things. Let's we'll see if there's any obvious stuff that we've missed while we chatted about anything else. Yeah, I think uh, we only have uh, Mikhail and Vlado who have not passed this turn. That'll be heading into turn three. Well, well it also should be noted, too, that... Um, this is the, the game's pace will probably Josh will start to push them to pick up the pace a little bit uh, that we're an hour and 45 in, although the first half hour was deciding upon the the factions. Right. So we're we're averaging, you know, half hour, 40 minutes per per turn, per round. Um, but uh, the, there's there's a tighter schedule in terms of starting the finals on time because of the, the restrictions from just renting the space. The, and when WSBG has to be out of the space, like most conventions, if you've been to a convention, you have to end a little bit earlier on the final day. And so we'll see uh, probably the, the tempo being pushed a little bit um, by by the judges. And and we'll see uh, we'll see how that affects people as well. I know. And I think uh, I, I think I remember that they got, you know, when they started, they were they were given like a hey. Yeah. You know, you guys have this much time. Make sure you're getting it done. Looks like Vlad did pass here. And I have noticed that Angela is is playing pretty quick. I think she understands yeah. that, like, she knows what she wants to do. She wants to get it done. She doesn't want to have any time problems. And I, I also totally understand where everyone else is coming from when they're taking their, you know, their thinking. They, oh, there's a lot to think about. There's, there's a, a lot, lot to consider. think about. It has felt like a decent pace to me. Uh, in terms of the amount that you do need to think about the, this game and all the moving parts. Uh, so they did all just pass. So they'll clear their personal boards, clear the public boards, and then uh, flip their pass tiles and do some income. So while we do that, we know that Angela is getting two from the board for knowledge, one from her tech tile, and then another three from her board, and then mm-hmm. another one from the pass. So she's at seven, which is... You'd much rather be at eight. <laughs> yeah, at all just possible. just behind. Yeah, I think I think uh, she went into the terraforming right, and she went up on that track. And then, did she build a mine that turn with it? Would be the question you ask yourself. Because if she didn't, getting to eight would just move her there anyway. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And she didn't use any of that charge. And maybe she thought she was gonna. Maybe William cut her out of that charge that yeah. she thought she was gonna get. Uh, but yeah, she she, I, she just got I, the three charge to put her into bowl two, but then nothing has moved since then, since that bump yeah. up, right? So I think if she had gone, she would have gotten the charge three anyway to move up the knowledge track, and then she would have made eight instead of seven, and then immediately one of those could have moved her into the brown track which would let her get on her different colors and pick up right. that tech tile for, for the value this turn where you get the extra points for moving up the tech tracks. So I think that's a, I don't want to say a misstep, you know, like she's doing yeah. a lot of really good things and a lot of smart things. And I like a lot of what she's doing, but I think uh, one more knowledge was just very, very strong. Yeah. Yeah. If she had gotten it and then you get on your four colors. She also hasn't gotten on a green yet though. Uh, which is which is one that I would have thought she'd be on by now. Mm-hmm. She is second in turn order as well, and I think she might get some charge. Oh no, she doesn't get any, she doesn't get much charge, so she she's not going to be able to push her. Uh, I was thinking she might be able to capitalize and get that two that two knowledge purple move as the first action, but I don't think she's she's done her income and she hasn't moved any any power yeah. along. So yeah, she has no charge com- coming in. 
she could technically charge if the first thing William did was to build on his Gaia former. You know, she could get a bunch of charge from that, but we'll see where William prioritizes building the Gaia former. He has three per power in in mm -hmm. bowl three, so he could he's gonna get free resources for dumping out from the Gaia zone. And then he could just launch one and then immediately take two ore or whatever else he feels is is efficient. Yeah. Uh, he he's got a lot of options from C one here. Which yeah, I I, I really like. like yeah, I really like William's position right now too, going into this into this next one. He's not as expanded as Angela is, but he, he just feels he feels pretty strong. Although Angela's resources are really tasty. Yeah, she's got a little more. He's gonna get more here when he dumps out the Gaia zone. So they're they're both good on That's resources. True. Yeah. Uh, he's gonna long term have more expansion with the Gaia zones and all the stuff he's getting going on. Yeah. She she has to find color planets, which of course she ran up the brown track, so she'll be good at doing that. Uh, but he's he's gonna have a lot of space on that left side of the board that that should be his. Uh, again, he's not excited about Vlad being in Gaia forming. I'm mm -hmm. sure. And I again, I think Vlad put that satellite out just to kind of lock up a Gaia forming zone. But yeah. he already had that. He could have gone to to Sector 10. He could have gone into Sector 4. I, I don't think that was where his satellite needed to go that turn. Yeah, uh, it's it's tough for, for Vlad's position because... Uh, well, well. Also, um, William's the only person who's moved up on that navigation track, right? In terms of that extra range, so yes. everybody's got yeah. to. But, but Vlad, I guess, has a little bit more flexibility because of that uh, QIC generation. Yeah, they don't. The, if it's rarely go up navigation, I'm shocked mm -hmm. to not see any Xenos or Taclon on it at this mm -hmm. point. But I love what Angela's doing. So, and she's spending yeah. her QIC as well, so she doesn't need it. It seems. Uh, but it, man, if he ends up up there alone and he gets Lost Planet in the federations for five points each without competition, mm -hmm. he he should be in a great seat because he's he's just going to go up those two tracks. He's just going to be on those two, and if he gets all the points at the top of both of them, uh, that's going to be really solid. And Clip. so we'll see. I've said it. I've said it once. I'm saying it again. I've. I'm feeling the Gaia Project itch. This is very exciting. <laughs> this is just very exciting to watch these players play. <laughs> I want to immediately There's... go play Gaia Project on BGA. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Fun game. I love it. Uh, we played it at PressCon. I'm planning to play it a little bit at WBC here. Nice. Sadly, we will not play it at World Series next year. That's Some true. Of us had to cry a bunch about that. <laughs> it's very. It it uh, has been replaced. Um, it has been replaced. It's a. Uh, it's a big behemoth and a long time crunch game, and we know that. And that's uh, like John Hagermeyer gave me a lot of good reasons why why it ended up getting getting dismissed. And I think it totally makes a lot of sense. I understand from every aspect, including the business aspect, why yeah. that would have to happen. But I am I am gonna fight for the fact that Gaia Project had three of the same four people at the final table. I think as far as a skill cap or a skill involved game with yeah. as little variance as possible it's just gonna be not matched yeah uh we see william take a white planet here charge angel a little bit S starting to work on his second uh, second or third fed up there which which makes a lot of sense but i think that the gaia project as much as anything else is going to have a community that sees the final table a lot yeah. And I think you see it in Great Western Trail also with the same kind of players right. kind of walk, getting through the field and working their way through the field. Uh, and those kind of things are interesting to me, right? You know, nobody likes to see the Patriots in the Super Bowl every year, but then you're <laughs> like, oh, man, how do they do that? That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And so you kind of have that with Gaia Project where I think something like it. But William was at the Ticket to Ride both times, you know what I mean? So yeah. you've got other people who do it in other games as well. For me, I can't. I can't win raw to save my life. Uh, yeah, Lloyd, but seen, Lloyd, Lloyd, Lloyd was at both the final tables. table in both. Yeah, and so it's it's interesting for me. I like those kind of storylines. I like to see yeah. when when people make the same final table in the same game because it really shows their their experience and their level with those games. And so that's the thing I'm going to miss the most about 
Gaia project and of course self-servingly uh feeling good about my abilities in it <laughs> right of course <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, so, it, it's also fun. It's also fun, and it makes really great stories for for when when newcomers are also able to then to then work their way in there as well too, right? Like having the guy the guy final table was a friggin' banger. You had yourself Bryant who went on to win Patchwork, which has also uh, been been rotated out for this year. <laughs> yes, uh, a tough year for Bryant. <laughs> oh, uh, Ricky, who was the Seven Wonders uh, winner. <laughs> champion? also been rotated out we're just we're just picking on you we're picking yeah that that was a table, table with <laughs> when it was done four people who won rings right we have four people yeah. who won rings at that one final i don't that was probably the first one yeah uh for some history or whatever but yeah. also four people who have won rings in games that are no longer at the world <laughs> series it's crazy but super fun yeah definitely a, a strong final table and I don't know if there's a weak final table at the World Series. I I can't name one. They've, yeah, they've been really good players at a lot of games, uh, which is another another thing that's awesome about it. Something I really like about it. I love the two moves from William here just to get yeah. started. Yeah. He he built on the white one. He knew he was going to take that right away, and then he's moving up on the navigation track. He's getting more QICs, which are easy for him to use. The only thing. Like we keep saying, or I keep saying, he does mm -hmm. not have the points for green planets. You know, there's yeah. so many points that he can. He's potentially earn. leaving on the table. Yeah. Yeah, and and it's it's so difficult to pick up that tech tile for him, but he's just got to find a way. He's got to find a way to do it. Well, Mikhail is spinning the power stone as efficiently as you can now with no other yeah. power in. It means it has no friends, so he can't take any public actions of four the other thing is usually right away at the start of each round especially in the middle rounds the public actions get taken right away yeah and they they have not been taken yet angela They're takes the open. tile we totally talked about yeah but she's going to take it only for two colors uh so she's she's going to say i don't want green and something else i'm just going to get two bumps out of this yeah and i'm going to get some points because i moved up a track I think, I think especially being at the top of brown, getting on two other colors first would have, you know, like it goes back to that thing we were saying. If she got to eight right. and then she picks this up for four, you know, it's a ton of points on tech tracks. It's a ton of points on moving up uh, this turn for the for the overall goal. Uh, and but I think she, she was in a position she, to do it. Yeah, she she does she does get the get the knowledge bump though to put her over over eight so we'll we'll be able to yeah. move up twice yeah she'll and be able think, to use that for two yeah. and she got one for taking the tile i think i think there was easy potential there this turn for her to get four out of that i think she could have gotten that up to 12 and moved up with the tech tile uh so potentially a missed opportunity there she is really struggling on the on the aura money at this exact yeah. moment by picking up that tech tile uh, so she's all in on knowledge. She is yeah. producing a ton of knowledge, and she's going to get her resources from the tech tracks, it appears. But she won't be able to put as many mines down this round. Uh, so her expansion is going to hit a little bit of a hiccup, a little bit of a stall here. Uh, and all the players are really struggling on their resources for yeah. round three. Usually for me, round two is the is the tightest, the lowest resource, right? Because you start with so much around one, and then you kind of spend it all, and you you build up, and then two is where you get the least, and then every turn after that, you want to ro ro keep rolling into three, into four, into five, more and more resources every turn. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are not we are not seeing that yet, where the the resources have really started to snowball. So yeah, I, I think I think there was potential for Angela to to have even more knowledge this round and be up even more on more tracks. Yeah, it feels uh, like it feels like Angela's uh, plan was was major expansion, but it, it, and she was spreading out so effectively. But now that that feels a bit stalled at the current moment. Yeah, we haven't seen it for a while. It's been. Uh, 
it's been definitely focus on the knowledge plan here, like I said, mm-hmm. which I do really like. But uh, and trying to push forward so wants- that she could capitalize on the points of moving up on tech tracks in this this age specifically. Too. Yes, yeah, she she clearly knew and thought about that, uh, and and it was a plan, and I I totally understand that. She is going to get not get public actions here. They've been taken pretty quick. So we've got Mikhail getting on a gray planet. Uh, and again, this is another, if Vlad had jumped over to sector four, you know, he'd be getting more charge out of this. Uh, he loves to see Mikhail spend that green to jump over there though, and not mm-hmm. take his green across the side uh, and run down through, through sector 10. But yeah, he's he's gonna go to sector four and try and get down on the brown planet down there, and maybe then hop up to yellow and down to green. I mean, it's yeah, it's he a, doesn't it's, have satellites. He does or he doesn't have power to make satellites. He is he is stuck at this point. The PI it's a long for and the windy taclons, road. <laughs> yeah, it is a long windy road. The Taclon's PI does make them free power. So he he you know. You want to build your big buildings on one and five. Obviously, we had that talk in this game, but yeah. he's going to need it. He's going to need it in the middle of the game here to to start regenerating his power. Mm-hmm. The other ways he's regenerating power are just inefficient. And now he's charging four and only getting two charge out of it. So he's yeah. playing the power stone a lot more fair than it should be. So we want to we want to see him get in a PI kind of as quickly as he can so that he can start every time he gets charges he gets a free power from that as well because he's he's not going to have enough to make the satellites that he needs and and he's he's really stuck his board position as we talked about early brown angela did not spin the board for brown to to be awesome <laughs> yeah and again i think she did that on purpose i think she yeah. she saw the strength of yellow and she felt good about xenos these are all just guesses and hunches you know me just speculating but i i think she thought those things and she was like i don't want anyone to play brown i don't want anybody to be in my way yeah. so i'm gonna make yeah. this look bad and uh not bad enough for mckeel not bad enough yeah <laughs> and so we'll see william's got all his power almost yeah, all but one of it in really the nice three so and he's, oh, he he's will got... take something the pick He's of looking at a the litter. double dig maybe he could take money he could take knowledge all of those are good for him mm-hmm. uh, they're all efficient and he's got so much to expand with he really needs to start getting up his purple track though he's a little behind on on getting yeah. up the Gaia track he should he should be a step or two a little further on that now in an ideal world for himself and again we talked about it he missed the two knowledge last time uh which which cost him a step so he's gonna place his Gaia former out that's gonna give Angela a free charge instead of making her pay a bunch for her big building there so yeah I would have I would have spent my charge before I gave Angela all her chips yeah and especially uh, Oh, look at her. She snaps the seven money. She's so happy he didn't take it. Yeah. (laughs) That's that's a that's a huge clutch for Angela. That was an instant play. She was and then he Vlad right behind it snaps the other public action. They both they're both were probably sweating through William's turn as he was playing all his purple chips and then he's like, you know what, I'm gonna build this over here and they were like, Yay. I don't need it yet. Yeah, I find I find because resources get so tight it feels like you don't need them and then suddenly you realize oh no i really do that that might have been the time for william to take that seven money and just hoard it and i i wonder if he you know early in the game we saw him spend and then get charged right after so i wonder if he was thinking to himself well i got one more power that could slide in and then i could do a four and a five right and that'd be better so i kind of want to you know, do both things. Well, we see we see Mikhail going up on the knowledge track again. Angela yeah. can't love that. She probably wanted to be up there alone. Uh, but yeah, Will, William here. That was a that was an interesting round. And again, I, I'm not going to say misplay. I'm going to say just his choice really gave the other players a lot of stuff. 
Yeah. If he had taken the money there, and he's not like he's super money rich. If he had taken the money there, Angela was going to have a real tough time for the rest of the round. Instead, yeah. I mean, she instead of making seven money, she was going to make so four. Was, yeah, it would have just converted. Yeah. Free action. But it was just not as good. But oh, William's plan was to go into the knowledge. So he just didn't care about all that other stuff. Right. He's going to take three knowledge. I wonder where he thinks he's finding his fourth, because obviously you want to bump this turn for getting the points for moving up tech tracks. Oof, really good timing from Angela too, with spending that that power and then and then bumping jumping up on the knowledge yep. to yep. to recharge it. That that timing is oh, you love to see it. Perfect, yeah. And she and she wanted the money so bad, like mm-hmm. she needed the yeah. money so bad, and and she got that. So she likes a lot of these things that are happening. Now, I wouldn't if I was her, and I, I think she'd probably think the same thing. I'm, I'm not going to go to the top of the blue track by spending knowledge. I'm going to pick up that big big building right. tectile Definitely. because of the strength of the Xenos being the, the six power fed. So now mm-hmm. your big building's all being four. You know, you're 66% to a fed with one building. It's just very efficient. Yeah. And especially with that end game goal of federations. Yep. Yep. She I think she's gonna make her feds near the end of the game. Making out being up on the blue track messes with some of that plan if I'm her. I mm-hmm. the plan was to be up blue alone and no one else was gonna be up there. And so I can just sit and wait to pick up that sector tile the whole game and then make my feds on the last turn and pick that up. He's up there now, so that's not a locked-in guarantee. You can wait forever, and he really has no points like coming that you can see. So his points have to be get that tile. So yeah. they're in a race for that, I think. Uh, it feels to me like that's that's a race that Angela will win, though. I think she will win it. It just means she'll have to build her. Either she'll have to build the PI for not five points, or she'll have to make a seven strength fed when her feds could be built at six. And a huge play there by William, just that that telegraphed yep. Naya forming from Vlado yep. there. William's yep. like, all and right, well, that, I want it, so I'm going to go <laughs> over there. <laughs> yeah, William did not like seeing Vlad go into Gaia. Yeah. And him putting that satellite down there last turn, like I said, this was always a possibility that that William could steal it from you anyway. It's a tough it's a tough break, but Vlad had another guy. He didn't need to lock that one in, you know. Yeah. That satellite could have got him a lot more useful things and now it gets him nothing. Unless uh, he can still get to the just red with creeping it, but... along, yeah, with the red. If he plays another satellite down, he can then get to the red. It feels like a a long and a long way to get to those reds, but uh but instead of having this orange at the top, he could have the orange at four and the satellite right next to it, and he'd be next yeah. to the red already, and then the satellite yeah. could go to his green over on ten. I mean, it's just, it's a, or even another satellite next to where he's uh, over on uh, the far right middle where he's got the red and the green there. That can get to a transdim. Yeah. Since Mikael had has no power, you can steal that transdim from him. Like. And, it, and, and you see the, I feel feel Vlado's feeling the pressure too. You see when Mikhail upgrading that right beside that red planet. Anytime somebody upgrades something where you wish you had a mine, it, it's a pang. You're like, oh, oh that's, yeah. there's that's the charge all, I missed. There's the charge I missed. Stuff. Well, and he set himself, I mean, Vlad, Vlad had a plan. Vlad yeah. set himself up. He put all his purple chips in zone one. He was going to put that guy a former Dow to the William yeah. hook it. So he's, you know. It's exactly so. Here's here's William again. If William loses this game, uh, and of course we don't know from months ago. Yeah. But if <laughs> we don't know the we don't know the outcome. <laughs> if William loses this game, it's that tile. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's that green build on green for Not points. I hate to harp on it too it. much. Yeah. But if he had found a way to have that, oh, many more points that he would have had. At what point uh, in the game, if you're Terrans, um, do you abandon that hope? Now? Oh, man. Uh, yeah, turn four? 
I don't know. I still want to stack it with the turn five build mines on green. Like I want to get yeah. six points every time I build a mine. Like yeah. that sounds amazing. Uh, so I don't, I don't, I would still get it. Yeah. If I was him, I would still get it next turn on turn uh, four. I would still buy it if it, if it was possible. And honestly, I don't see any other tile that he needs or wants really bad. You know, he might take the charge four because he needs to get up that Gaia track. But, uh, yeah, I, w- I would take it next turn still. If it's available. Because he's still got so many greens. Like, mm-hmm. Angela didn't jump to that yellow down on s- tile six. I really thought she was gonna. Yeah. And she and she didn't take that green from you or that brown in that corner. I thought she was gonna jump in there and get all this charge from all the stuff the blue's gonna do. That seemed like the, the obvious expansion as she was expanding so quickly. And I'm sure she's still going to do it at some point, but it's just uh, she ran out of QICs, I think is really what happened. Yeah. Uh, so I, yeah, I think Vlad definitely got cut off here and, and yeah. is reworking what he's going to do from from that positioning. He can, of course, like we said, still build his, his guy former on a trans dim right next to his PI. It's not the end of the world, but he's he's a lot more cut off than he, mm-hmm. he could be at this point. He could have a lot of expansion opportunity at this point, getting a lot of charge from people, having a lot of mines out there, be really spread out. So I still like his position better than, than Mikhail's right at this exact moment. So Mikhail is going to pass low on resources again, still doesn't have power. Yeah. Uh, at he least in a tough spot. A few more resources this round because he's got all three of his mines and a trading post out. Yeah. Uh, but his his tech tiles too. I mean, he doesn't have income from his tech tiles. He he got a one time bonus and his his big buildings are one bigger, but he only has one of those out. And then he's got, of course, the charge four that they come with. So yeah. It's a. It's kind of a, again, snowballing problems. When yeah. when things are going wrong and in, in Gaia Project they they keep going wrong they don't reverse course magically. He is leading though in terms of points. I was gonna make this uh, <laughs> I was gonna make this comment earlier because uh, Vlado was it looked like ten or so points behind everybody else. They were kind of lockstep with each other and Vlado was behind. And then I look instantly and the points have jumped. Uh, how how I- insignificant almost are the points at this at this stage in the game? It, like completely. The point tracker. Yeah. completely irrelevant at every yeah. point instead of turn six except yeah. if you're zero <laughs> <laughs> uh the the points matter as far as you want to know that you're close or competitive so if somebody's way ahead right. of you but they've scored all their feds or they've done all those things then it's fine if you've scored all the same things you've done all your feds they've done all their feds you've gotten the round bonuses whatever and they're way ahead of you, then it's time to, to be concerned. Then you've got a problem. Right. Um, but in Gaia Project, until turn six, the points are, are only just there so you know how much you have to pay to charge. Yeah. Uh, Bryant, Bryant in, in year one went down to zero points as the Ibbots. <laughs> uh, we had to look up rules because he was so low. There she gets <laughs> on he, a new color. He wanted to charge more, and he didn't have the points. Wanted to go into negative. Yeah, he. Well, he he. You can't go negative, so you just get a free. You get a free one charge, even if your building was bigger, and you would have to be mm. normally paying more if you're at zero. And then on turn four or five of the game, he was in the lead of the game at 150 points. Uh, wow. And and then he ended up getting fourth. So it it's it's irrelevant. Yeah. Uh, at every point, except at the end of the game, but it is. It is nice to know, and it is nice public information to have that you know where everybody else is uh, based on what they've done. So he is going to just expand the satellite one more toward yeah. that red planet. It's like we kind of talked about. Yeah. it's Again, he's he's decided Angela's going to keep racking knowledge and knowledge points. is no surprise. Uh Vlado does have the option to take that terraforming, but it seems with his position, he probably doesn't need it. Yeah, he's he's got all the red planets. He's got plenty of green planets. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got a Gaia former. Did he not put his Gaia former out this round? Doesn't look like it because uh, 
Well, we oh, yeah. still had one right. He still next had to his one right guy. beside him. I think Maybe he missed he that. I think he got so messed up that William took his spot. Right. That he got and like we talked about, he hasn't slept probably enough, or there's yeah. there's other factors contributing to it. But I think he, I think he may have missed that that he could have put that guy a former out because if if I'm seeing it right, he still has a ton of power in bowl three. We hear, we're hearing Josh giving them a warning right now that we've got to, they've got to pick up the pace or else they may have to end on, uh, on round five. I think he said, he said, you know, I'm warn, I'm just warning you. He said, if you play fast enough, we can get to number six, but just keeping, keeping the players apprised of that time. Yep. Fair, fair point. Well, Chris, do we want to click pause here after three sure. that we discussed? Or do you want to keep? I mean, I'm down to keep going. Okay. I my my cat is asleep. <laughs> I don't have to feed him just yet. So. If you're down, but I'm also down to to take a break. No, yeah, I'm good. To, we can keep rocking it. I'm having too so much they... fun. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, no, it's a it's a good final. They got a lot of. A lot of good stuff happening, a lot of intelligent plays for people who haven't played mm -hmm. it a ton, and uh, some outside the box thinking for sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm re I'm really impressed. Like, I I am I'm obviously not as good at, at Gaia Project as you are, because uh, most of my experience resides in Terra Mystica, and and then trying to reconstruct my thinking into all the changes that Gaia makes. But I, I've 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 loved watching all these players play, and I, I've seen the little the little tweaks that we've been talking about, and it's been it's been a it's been more of a hmm. I wonder why that happened versus a oh no, never, <laughs> never in a million years should you do that. So I Absolutely. I really like watching all these players play and seeing them sort of figure out the game and interact with each other. Yeah, I like all that stuff as well. I like uh, I like Angela's knowledge build here. Got mm -hmm. some really cool stuff going on. Again, I think I think Xenos is a not the faction I would run it with the most often, but it's working well for her, and it could be even higher. Same thing with Vlad. I think he's got a good Ivet plan. He's he he saw a lot of good stuff. Yeah. I don't I don't like that he hasn't taken his green planet. <laughs> I just. Yeah, look at how many QIC he has. He's sitting on three or four. Yeah. He's just like, oh, I'll build on it sometime. I don't know, whatever. I don't like that thing. Uh, William's doing a great job with the Terrans, but like we say, he, he, he'd like to be up one more tech track if he got that green, green uh, tile. And then the other thing is if he's up the Gaia track more, like, the more Gaia formers you're putting out, the more efficient it is. So he's putting six tokens over there every turn, and he's getting six points of resources. But if he gets to two Gaia formers, he's putting eight tokens over there every turn, and he's getting eight points of resources. Mm -hmm. And if he gets to the next level, he's putting nine over there, and he's getting nine points of resources. So it's just more and more stuff. And, of course, you want as much stuff as you can get mm -hmm. every single turn. Uh, we also, nobody took the big building past tile, uh, for this yeah. round, I think it got passed last. Uh, that is that is the tile you're gunning for from this stage on. At half point, halfway through the game, you want that tile every round. It is so many points uh, for, for just having, for every big building you have. And if, let's say you're Mikael or, or someone, or even Angela wants to build a federation early, and I take the big building tile for passing for four okay well i didn't get five for building it in the last round but i got four for passing with it on this turn when i built it oh so it's one point difference but i yeah. get to make my feds earlier like it's all just good stuff yeah so making else spending his qic and taking the public action and he's building on gray again so he's working on that uh right side federation but he's kind of going down and we talked about him going up mm-hmm but uh, yeah, him going up, he's been he's been blocked by. Uh... Oh, oh, down on the other side, uh, on the on the yeah, upper on the, on the upper one and four, he's now blocked from that expansion because yeah. Angela, I think, read that correctly immediately and then focused her expansion there. 
Yep. And again, she always could have taken a brown on on tile nine, like we talked about. Like, mm-hmm. but they're just friends. She has nobody over there, and I think she's yeah. very cognizant of understanding. I want to be around people because I want to build my buildings up and make a ton of feds with my six strength federation. So I'm yeah. not gonna go out into corners where I'm alone. I'm gonna be around everybody. I'm gonna be getting this charge. I'm yeah. gonna be just have a ton of buildings. Our building count right now, as you'd expect, is if it's are behind and, mm-hmm. and Terrans and Xenos are kind of ahead. I expect Terrans to win that, uh, but I. I that's partly because of their Gaia forming strength. Now, for those final final uh, end game things, is it is it is that one also a race, or you can tie? You, so you can tie. Yeah. So it's eighteen, twelve, and six are the points you get for winning them outright. Yeah. And and first, second, third, no matter what you get, uh, and then fourth gets zero. And if you tie, so if you tie for first, you just split it. So twelve and eighteen become fifteen 30, each. Yeah. So you just get 15 each. So that's where you're talking about a six or a three point difference mm-hmm. for winning or tying. And again, people spend a lot of resources to make three or six points there. And and sometimes it's not worth that many, especially if you're like, oh, I'm going to tie for three points with this player that's behind me by a significant margin. It's like, OK, so you took three away from that person who wasn't with you and you made three for yourself, but you spent five. Yeah, yeah. Like, not good uh and it's hard to read in this game it's a lot easier in a lot of other games where you're like clearly paying points but when you're paying resources in this game those are points at the end of the game every three resources is a point uh so when to spend them and then especially on turn six when to save them uh is is something to be Mm -hmm. aware of Okay, so we see Josh frantically adjusting everybody's score and monitoring the power <laughs> charge and and helping. Uh, shout out to Josh, the Josh Schwartz, our, our one of our main judges, uh, really keeping keeping the players sort of uh, on on task. And it feels like the the speed of this game is starting to ramp up too. I think all the players wanna wanna hit, don't want the game to have to end early. You know, yeah. they they want to finish. They want to get to the finale because for a lot of these players, uh, they they've been planning on on having a a sixth round yeah this is this is just a very difficult game to try and not not play the sixth turn I, yeah i had a round that was almost that went past time and we had a player that was having a really tough time you know making choices and it it's very difficult when that's happening because you're like you know i want to give them plenty of time to make their decisions they're in this tournament that's a big deal that they've mm-hmm. signed up for but at the same time like i feel pretty good about my position to win but it's it's yeah. based on getting that sixth <laughs> turn so right yeah you know i also need you to make your plays but i absolutely shout out to josh i i've been very impressed with all the judges at the wsbg uh very happy with the the professionalism they've had and i've been fortunate enough to have josh judge uh multiple final tables Mm. with me and for us and really really appreciate him he is awesome so friendly so professional so knowledgeable especially in gaia project too i know last year i had um brian muller who's uh, commented who's done the designer series with me he commented on a raw with me uh and and, uh, josh they did the commentary for the 2022 gaia just because I, I, again, I was like, ah, if it was Terra Mystica, I'll do it. But it was the one that I wanted to pass off. <laughs> yeah, I, I liked uh, Josh's commentary last year. He, he told me, he's like, yeah, we just kind of sat there and watched you guys play. <laughs> like, That's fair. Yeah. That's totally reasonable. If I'm tuning in to watch Guy Project, I feel like I can... Yeah. Watch it and see what's going on. So that's okay. So here we go. Angela running up her green track now, mm-hmm. using all that knowledge to get QIC. So she said, I don't need the range track. I'm not going to mess around with that. Yeah. I'm going to just, oh man. And he ends up, Vlad ends up putting that satellite really close to where he, he could have just had it anyway. Yeah. Two turns ago. Uh, but she's she's done it like we said a great job with the knowledge she's moved up to the tracks vlad is competing with her at the top of the terraforming track so there's going to be a little bit of a race to get to the top of that interestingly which you almost never see the ivets have not made a federation yet 
Yeah. So you need a federation to take the top advanced tech tile or to move up to level five. You need you need a federation to do both those things. And so if you get to the top of the terraforming track first and you're the only one who can get up there, then you get a free federation with it. It's a whole nother federation you can flip to take another tile to do stuff. So Angela is, you can see her sigh a little bit there as the Taclon player continues to pressure her on this blue right. track. Uh, it and, is and not Mikhil, what she, Mikhil does have a federation. I think Mikhil's the only person who has a federation right now. does. And, and yeah, I would hate every part of that from Angela's <laughs> seat. I would hate every part of it because she's got a competitor on both her tracks that she's crushing. And now she's at the top of green where she can get the tech tile for two points every time you move up on a tech track. And she's moving up tech tracks like crazy, mm -hmm. but she has no federations. So she can't take any of that stuff yet. And I think her plan was to take it all at the end and kind of skip this, this move up the tech tracks for points. And both the tracks she's been on now, she probably anticipated competition on the brown one, but I I, I would be surprised to have a Taclon player up the knowledge track with me. Uh, that that is not what she wants. I think she's yeah. probably upset at Mikhail, not upset, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. It, it, everything he's done from picking brown at the start and then everything after that is been disappointing for what she was hoping to do. We see William use uh, his power to get some that money bump learned from last turn. William, William is, has been reprogramming himself all throughout he's, this game, I think. We, we've seen, he's learning on the yeah, fly yeah. really well. Yeah, he's yeah. like, okay, wait for my charge. Oh, don't don't wait too long. <laughs> okay. And don't let other people... A, a huge part of Gaia Project is sometimes taking like... Because you'll use it. You'll use your seven money, right? Uh, yeah. But sometimes other people need it. Yeah. And then reading reading correctly, do they need it right now so bad that I'm mm -hmm. going to take it because it's like game losing for them? Or do they need it really bad, but it's fine if they have it kind yeah. of thing uh, is is a, one of the reads that is difficult to make in Gaia Project. And, and if you're doing that correctly is a is a big advantageous bump to your cause. Yeah, Angela's still got really good federations in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. William has good federations in the pipeline. Mikhail still has a struggle for federations coming. He keeps sitting on the on the top amounts of resources too. You know, he's he's got like three knowledge. You really want four. Uh, he's gonna spend now to get. He he essentially turned his power stone in zone three mm -hmm. into one power chip. Uh, because he made an ore with it and then he spent it to get one. Uh, and I'm sure his plan was to take the two from the board, but Angela took it this round already. Yeah. So one of the public actions is to add two power for three and the power stone can just do that. And so I think he was probably thinking to himself, all right, well, I've been stuck on this power ever since I made that fed, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out of it this turn. I'm gonna use this power stone. I'm gonna make some power. And now he ends up having to make one instead of two. Yeah. And and I can't imagine he he feels excited about that. And now he's kept his four in there, probably hoping to get knowledge or or. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see what gets back to him. Vlad has a good amount of power that he could spend this turn, and not yeah, a lot William of William could sacrifice it right now in in bowl two, right? Drop he two could. out. He could. I don't think he wants to because he wants all his power. He loves right. turning those into to Gaia formers and making more resources. Yeah. So, but he's charging everybody else here, and so they might. I don't. Mikhail gets something. He just may not get what he wants. Yeah. Uh, but William builds a big thing, and now he gets a tech tile. He's gonna take big buildings here. This is my first. Interesting. I, I see what he's doing. He's making his feds with that, and I understand yeah. it. But I think this is the first big misstep from William that I've seen. Is I don't think that's the tile he wants. I would, like we've said, I would take the green one still. Yeah. Uh, I would take the green one, get my QIC, and just pay my full seven points for my for or seven strength for my federations with blue. Yeah, he does have uh, the power to create those to to connect those satellites, and so if he's if he's expanding onto the green planets, then he's he's getting the points through that, and then just spending that power on satellites, 
Yeah, like, you know, and because the the green the mines on green planets is on the green track, you know, you get a QIC with it. Essentially, factor in with his range that that's another three mm-hmm. points, right? This comes with another green planet. It comes with another planet on the planet's game. Uh, again, I understand the idea behind it, yeah, but I just don't agree with it. Uh, I think that I think though that that points on a green planet is is very similar to what we were talking about earlier uh, in Terra Mystica. The the points for every time you build a mine, right? It's that it's that idea of okay, I need to be focusing on those other things. It doesn't feel like a lot until you until you look back at the game and say, oh shoot, I could have gotten X amount of points if I had yep. pivoted. Yep, I totally agree. So Mikhail gets what he wanted. He gets the knowledge. He saved the four stones uh, specifically to take an action on the next turn, and he he gets to take knowledge here. I don't think too many people have scored very many points for the trading post this round yet. Yeah. Uh, not. And again, another big part of Gaia Project, there's so many things to think about and focus at the same time, which is either something that makes you excited when you like to yeah. play board games like this, or makes you think this is the game I never want to play, <laughs> is why do I have to focus on 40 things? But you need points from your past tiles. You need points from the round bonus. But you you need points from the end game goals. You need points from the tech tracks. Yeah. But you can't go all in on or federations or whatever else it is. But you can't just be like, well, I'm just going to build trading points this turn, almost this turn, and then I'll have a bunch of money next turn that I can't use. You know, it all yeah. has to synergize. So he's going to use immediately. He's going to use the. Yeah, he wanted that federation. He wanted the, the two federations form. that are sort of set up. Yeah. And again, why I don't like that is he has a transdim right next to that purple, like or right next mm-hmm. to that blue. That's the same number of satellites and he could have gotten an extra three points out yeah. of it. Like yeah. it's another it's still the same federation, but more points. Uh yeah. He wants it right now. He wants it now. And I don't I think he's trying to ramp up his feds now because he's gonna get the federation, you know, each federation is worth five. And I think he's setting himself up, but nobody's up there. Like, it's shocking to me, but nobody else is up the navigation track. Mm-hmm. Angela can get a, up any track she wants at a moment's notice, but she has no yeah. feds. So I'll have plenty. If I'm him, I have a plenty of time to react, right? Yeah. Oh, here comes a fed. So now you have less of a time to react. <laughs> uh, but she's going to make a fed without her, or she did build, she built her PI. So yeah, strength six. Yeah. Federation, but without the size four building. So I wonder what the thought process behind that is. I think she's going to move up. It's because Vlad doesn't have one yet. She's yeah. doing this so she can jump to the top of the brown track, and somehow the Ibit player doesn't really. Yeah. She wanted she wanted to take that big building tile, but she decided a free Federation, and she's right. A free federation, eight points, and another four for being at the top of that track is worth, you know, one building strength's worth of efficiency. Yeah. And uh, now I think Vlad sees that now, too. I think Vlad, Vlad especially, especially as a Splendor player who, who you know, it's about reading, it's about remembering what the other people are doing and foreseeing yeah. what they're going for. And he's playing this game and he's understanding it as he goes. And he's like, man... Every time I have a plan, yeah, someone it, just someone jumps in, yeah. jumps in and cuts me off, and it's been the whole game. And and he has good plans, but he's not recognizing the point of the part of Gaia Project where all these races are. Yeah, and all the other players are like, oh, he's going for that. Like he's telegraphed that move. I'm gonna do it yeah, first. I'm gonna move in. Yeah, yeah. That was a really like the clutch play from William. That was one of the most clutch plays that i've seen and i don't know if we'll see mckeel take that other green building green yes. planet from him ever but if when uh, it happens you know i yeah I'm i don't know if he's gonna get Vlad that green over there <laughs> but it's been so long that's gonna be the moment of the game for me <laughs> he's been if, it, if it's not vlad i i will not have i have sympathy for him on his trans dim i have sympathy that angela's gonna beat him to the top of a track uh, but I will not have sympathy for the green if, if anyone else takes it because he's had plenty of time. 
Uh, he's going to take the double dig here and get on a white planet. Mm -hmm. I don't, again, I don't think the most efficient use of his, his power charge. He's, he's trying to, what he's doing is he's trying to compete in the buildings game, right? He's looking at it yeah. and he's like, I need another place. I need another building. But instead of getting on the trans dim he could have built on, instead of getting on that green that's on sector 10, instead of getting on the green and the red on the right, he's, he's you know, spent five charge to get on a white planet. And it just doesn't seem to make much of a difference here. He, he may take the tactile that counts for being on different colors. And that'll be one more knowledge at some point. But other than that, it's it's not not much. Yeah, we do see Mikhail head up towards again on that knowledge track, now jumping over Angela there. I think Angela's gonna has had to make a decision which one of those uh advanced tectiles, is that what they're they're called? Yes, yeah, the advanced tech. Advanced tectiles, which one she uh, wanted to go for, and she's going for the the one on the terraforming track. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if she's going to take the advanced up there. I think she's going to just take the Federation up there. So here goes here goes William again going up the navigation track, and I think he's trying to get his... Yeah, here goes Angela taking her free fed. Yeah. Uh, totally makes sense. Understand every part of that. She needs the, the, the power, too, so it's just good on every level. Yeah. And, and beat Vlad to it, which... The Ibbots generally should not lose that race because they can make feds so early. But uh, yeah, Mikhail has said I'm gonna I'm gonna beat you to the top of this blue track and I'm gonna get points up there. Yeah. And I do agree with you that Angela's said okay, like I don't like it, but it's fine. I have to and make a choice. Yeah. She'll probably get her big building tile as her next tech tile she's gonna take, and she'll be at the top of the blue track. And she's on how many sectors? One, two, three, four. She only on five. I think she's only on five. She'll get on sector mm -hmm. six eventually. She's locked. She's had that green planet on sector nine available for a long time as well, but she's not yeah. range two, so it's a double green move for her. Now that William's range three, he can take it at any time also, and he can get down to his blue planet that you talked about early in the game on sector four. There. William at range three has a lot of options, but like I say, I'm not in love with him being at range three in the top of that tech track because there's he needs to get the Gaia formers out. He's he's not high enough on the purple track uh, for me on a Terran player. There's so much space for him to expand yeah. and and Gaia formers to build, but I think he might be thinking, you know, I'm gonna build a Gaia former down on six and then i'm gonna put another guy former on six and i'm just gonna do one a turn and you know that's a lot of space and i'm gonna use this range to get on all these other blue and green planets that might be the thought process there yeah we we also see vlado pass and vlado doesn't take the four points per large building tile Ooh, but yeah, instead that's... goes for that terraforming and that's that, an eight point tile farm right yeah. now. And if you built another one, yeah. So again, he's trying to build one more mine to compete on buildings and buildings and fed, which he's just not going to win. Yeah. Here we see Mikhail take that sector tile right away. So early on, he takes he he takes that even before Angela's threatening that she's going to be. Uh, at a level where she's allowed to take it. So you have to be a level mm -hmm. four or five uh, to take an advanced tactile on that same track. And then he moves to the top of Econ. So that, if I'm William, I love every part of that play because I yeah. don't see Mikhail having enough federations to compete in end game points. He doesn't have the power. He hasn't spent his resources in a way that I'm, I'm too worried about. But that was a tile on turn two, I was sure was going to Angela yeah, and was going to be a significant amount of points for her. Yeah. And so to see him, I mean, you know, William could pass him some money under the table because <laughs> you would beg for him to make that play and run up that track and flip his fed. And it's a, still an efficient point like that specific play that Federation was, was beneficial points for Mikhail, right? He got, mm -hmm. He got five sectors, so he got his 10 points out of it. 10-point advanced tech is is totally acceptable and, and one of the higher ones in this game. Uh, but really, I think the benefactor of that play was William. Yeah. And, and Angela, 
unfortunately from her seat gets very I don't I don't want to say hose but put in a lot of hard work yeah. and and is not going to get paid off at the top of that track as but I would have imagined. But at least had, have... has had the knowledge throughout the game to to help her run up those other tracks as well, right? Like Yes, she, yeah, for sure. She got it's that not early like income everything. compared to to the amount of knowledge that McKeel was able to get from his sort of delayed run up. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It paid off a lot more rounds for her. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she and you can see that on the tech track positions. He's up to full tracks. He's got he's actually got the dream uh, for Taclons, which is to be all the way up econ and knowledge. Mm-hmm. Of course, the dream is to do that on turn three, not to have it on turn four. So he's a turn late. Uh, but the problem is that kind of a move for a Taglon is really going to cut into your expansion. And this is a game where we know expansion is is a lot of points. Yeah, we see Angela grab her third federation because of that free one. Yes. Shooting up both of the endgame goals and uh, grabbing herself some knowledge. And now I wonder, with, with racking up these feds uh, without having the big building tile, she may have just thrown in the towel on getting the big building and being knowledge for her. She may not care now yeah. because that tile's gone. Mikhail made it obvious, and he takes the good pass tile here, so good job on him for that. Uh, She may have said, you know what, I'm just going to build my six strength feds. I don't care if my big buildings are are fours now. I lost out on that. But now she has a ton of feds, and and William does not. And so if she spends all this knowledge to run up navigation, Mm -hmm. that that tech tile up there is going to be 15 to 20 for her, where it's only five to William. She's gonna put him in a in a poor seat, uh, and he may even decide he just wants the Lost Planet instead, instead yeah. of the advanced tech for five points. So I think she's pivoted. I think she saw what what the Taclons were doing, yeah, and and said, "All right, I'm gonna rush all these feds." She stole the the one from Vlad. Stole like she she earned it, but she got the one on the terraforming track. And now she has a bunch. And even though she's not up navigation at all, she might be able to run it. And William maybe sees that as well and decides, yeah. you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna get a second end. one. And now if anybody comes up this track, those ten points are mine. And if no one comes up this track, I'm gonna get more than ten out of it. Yeah. Well, William also uh, paying attention. Well, the reason for William taking that uh, that that tile, the tech tile that he did. It kind of telegraphed his desire to make those federations this this time around as yes. well. Yes, he did. Yeah, they everyone kind of decided round four was their you know federation time. Yeah, uh, which is so interesting that that's when they're spending it. Generally, the longer you can wait, the more efficient it is. Mm-hmm. But you just can't always wait. You know, it's, yeah, it's it, it's a give and take based on Sometimes. who's winning what races. And yeah. now now that he's made two. And Angela always had this option. She's at the top of the green track, so she can take that advanced tech. And every time she bumps tech tracks, uh, she'll get two points over course over turns five and six. That'll probably pay out her, t- you know. Yeah. She's getting ten to twelve knowledge, so that'll pay out her ten to twelve points anyway. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a good tile for her. A really good tile for her. The problem the. If there's a problem, the only problem for her is she's doing so well on the tech tracks uh, that she's going to have to spend the end of the game moving up on Econ or Gaia, right. which are which are not efficient at the end of the game. Uh, she is... There you go. There's a good... There's the QICs. Yeah. Like we talked about early in the game, saving up QICs to take free actions. Now, she decides she needs power because she has spent it for her satellites. And so she got a free eight points and two power for, for re-tapping a Fed, for scoring a Fed again. Yeah. I also really, really like, for her and a couple other players, they have a lot of different color planets, pretty much everybody but William, two QICs for three points plus your colors. Mm-hmm. Like right now, let's say Vlad, right? He's on four colors. and he, and So seven points for two QICs. That is very efficient yeah. resource to point. Uh, and he could do it round four, five, and six. Well, yeah, Vlad's uh, passed, though. It, it's been it's been tough yeah, for Vlad, I think. Because he's, he's, he's passed, and 
all the other players have been taking a significant amount of action since he passed. And he may have already cleared it, but did he even do his charge four this round, or is he just... I think he cleared it. I think he cleared it. Okay, and then now William's going to take that other transdim, which Vlad just chose not to put put down yeah. this turn anyway. Well, two turns ago as well, he had the opportunity on turn three, and yeah. he's yeah. just he's just abandoned. Uh, I think he's Gaia abandoned the, the Gaia forming. Did you get my yep. Yeah, see he Angela looks... passes to get another QIC. She's she's getting a lot of good resources. There's no doubt about it. And, and one she's doing a lot of work four with more. only three tectiles. <laughs> yeah. This is a low tectile game. Nobody has more than three. I guess technically Mikhail has four with the advanced, but... Yeah. And so it's just William to finish out this round, and then we go on to round five. So they did play that round really fast. And, and you know what also may have happened is, you know, they got that time warning, mm -hmm. and everybody seems to have handled it well. But yeah. it may have may have affected Vlad. It may have, you know those kind of things affect different players differently. For sure. And yeah. he may have been like, you know what, I'm already having a tough time processing everything that I'm trying to learn on this game. I'm not super familiar with, and and now now we're in a time crunch, and I just yeah. being flabbergasted. It may have may have impacted his decision making here to try and play a little faster. We see William pick up some points with that pass. And the round has ended. Round four, and he took the power. I think I would have... I would have taken points there if I was him, but I... He has... He has plans. He has plans because he spent all his tokens on federations. Yeah. They might be worried this is the last round, too. I know that they're... That's it's, true, it's still yeah. a bit in flux, so I think their decision-making might might be affected as the players go into their income phase. So we're going to start round five here. They're doing their mm -hmm. income. We saw a ton of federations made and found in round four. It kind of one of those things where one Everybody saw everyone else doing it and sparked yeah. the the desire of well I better have some too I need you need federations to flip to do the advanced stuff uh, so we will see who that benefits the most I do like William at the top of at the top of navigation like I say I wish he was mm -hmm. for him I'd like him to be a little higher on the guy track that would generate him more points. And the other thing I think here, he took the two power tectile, but let's assume he's going to move up on the on the guy track. The next step of the guy track gets you three power anyway, so he's right. he's got some power there already. I don't know if he needed if he needed five more to go with the six he already had with so many satellites already built. Um, yeah, Vlad hasn't made any federations yet yeah he has he has plenty that he can make and it's uh, tough because he is he is connected right he has seven with the satellites oh, yeah, that are already four. connected the satellites count as one the space stations for if it's counted one as one as well so he's three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven all connected and then wow. if he if he connected up more let's assume he makes a space station as 12 13 Plus another three is 16. So, you know, he essentially has two locked in. Now, for if you don't know that faction, the Ivets spend QICs instead of power or purple chips for their mm. for their satellites. So they, they you know, need the QICs a little more. But generally, the satellites are enough to change, or the space stations are enough to change yeah. things up. I, I am also surprised that William, I guess he, because he made his federations early, he decided to put that space station all the way, or that guy former all the way over on 10. Yeah. Uh, because that's where his next federation that he's thinking about is going to go. Apparently he's going to try and get that green and then go white. 
Oh, they're talking about the time right now. Play fast enough. We can do the last game. Talking about time constraints and since I've already warned you. And that's uh if this round takes a very long time. Can you double check the building counts? Oh sure. Yeah. So yeah, Josh just saying like I'm I'm still warning you like we have we have to stop at twelve. They started at uh, eight eight a.m. I think, or or they're stopping at one. The finals at one. I know, and I feel like oh he was probably saying it's twelve now. So they probably because we're around two hours fifty minutes in, and so they need to be done by one essentially. Yeah, and this is something I think I think you guys had some really good plans, right, with the WSBG, and, and then you get stuck on this time constraint on the last day. Yeah. And I know it's a lot of information, so it's really difficult, and every game's different, so it's really hard to think about all these things. But for Gaia Project specifically, we saw a half-hour, 40-minute setup. You know, it, right. it, it's interesting because none of that changes. Obviously, you can plan for it a little better yeah. over the, if you have a whole night to think about it, but... You kind of wonder if if the setup being done the night before for a game like this might have just been giving right. everybody a little more time. Yeah, it might have been an option. I don't know if there's any games like that left. Obviously, like things like Heat and Lost Ruins of Arnak aren't going to have that kind of setup time, so maybe yeah. they'll be able to avoid. Well, also in two, it's so there's so much strategy that happens in the turning of the boards that Angela did, right? In terms of setting up, you you can't really choose your factions until the boards set up, and then knowing and getting that knowledge to to be the one. We don't we weren't sure. Well, I think we knew Angela was in seat four, but you can't bank on seat four being knowledgeable enough in the game to to set up a good board and not give um give a runaway leader, and so and so giving that time as well. Uh, to, yeah, to, lear to learn that and learn the importance of it if you're completely unfamiliar to Gaia. Yeah, if, if you set it up the night before, there's certainly other other potential problems. Yeah. I agree with that, definitely. If you do all the setup the night before, then people who don't know how to play can come out and be like, hey, this is the board set up. What right. should I do? You know, every step of the way. Yeah, and, yeah. and so I, I agree that it it is difficult. You also, maybe you could have an earlier start time for... Yeah. But it's, yeah, there's no perfect solution, that's for <laughs> sure. I think everybody does the best they can with what they got. And renting a big convention center in Vegas is uh, not cheap. So. Yeah, that's for sure. Although surprisingly, the hotels, at least the, the recurrent rate that we have, is, uh, is, is comparable or better than a lot of better other. Better than, like, yeah, if you just Prescott. wanted to go to Vegas. Yeah. yeah. If yeah, you I just want to take a trip to Vegas, you can yeah. you can sign up for the World Series <laughs> and not play any of your round events and probably still come out ahead. <laughs> That's true. But yeah, so they're doing all their income now. They're on turn five. Now they have to decide, are we doing turn five or not? So now's the point where Williams, Williams missed the... I, I wouldn't yeah. take the tech tile now. I wouldn't yeah. take the green planet tech tile now. It is the green planet build turn. There is an unbelievable amount of green planets left. You know, yeah. uh, Vlad Vlad's left his in that corner the whole game. Uh, it's untouchable. He's, he's uh, staked William his claim Angela. with that space station. <laughs> William and Angela have both got one up at nine. Angela could get the one over on, uh, on what is that, Sector 5. Mm -hmm. uh, William could get the one down on Sector 6. So there's a lot of green point planets to be to be had for a turn five. Now I'll, yeah. I'll just be straight with you. You're not going to see that many green planets left in most games uh, by, by turn five, even if there's not a bonus for it. Yeah. That is uncommon here. We see William with a, a lot of resources on turn five. And that's, that's nice to see because, and you see Angela also similar. Mm -hmm. She never got her mine expansion that I expected her to get fully done. And so she doesn't have as much ore as I thought she would have at this point of the game. Yeah. She's had money the whole game because of those tech tiles. So she's never had to have a trading post. That's absolutely the style of play I like. Mm -hmm. Trading posts are just to get me to my next thing is how I yeah. love to play. I don't want I to be uh, sitting on a ton of trading posts. Obviously, the Money Bird faction, there's some, some exceptions. But in general... Uh, trading posts i leave very few trading posts out most of the time everybody having pretty few trading posts except for william right now having three out 
but that gives William the ability to to upgrade them right now. Right, and with the resources he he has, he can make one or two small science buildings fairly yeah. easily, which transitions into the big science building on turn on turn six, like we talked about. Yeah, uh, assuming you know they get their turn six, of course. But you have to say for him, you have to set yourself up for that, of course. I think I don't think there's a lot of other option. Yeah, you get the bonus. And everybody, because they raced their their satellites and their Federation so mm -hmm. much. Nobody has power. <laughs> yeah. Here we go, yeah. Angelo with QICs again, probably taking a public action with them. No, she's going to build a mine on a green. Okay. And she's going to take the points for... So this is exactly the kind of thing I'm talking about. That's already in a Fed, so that's not helping. It does help yeah. for buildings in Fed and total buildings, but... She gets three points for building that there, right? Cost two QIC. She could just take the, you know, two QIC action and make six points. Right. So unless that building is the difference for winning buildings and or buildings that's in Fed, uh, that's a negative resource expenditure. Right. Because those same QICs, plus you talk about, okay, I built on this thing, so now William can't, let's say, but yeah, Vlad that's what over I was here, just about to say. with a hundred QICs, could take that same action. Right. Uh, so it's just now, if you look at points, and, and I said you don't really need to look at points unless you've done stuff and other people haven't done stuff. Mm -hmm. So Vlad's way behind on the point track, but he hasn't made any feds yet. Yeah. Uh, if you factor in that he has about two feds, though, he's still a significant chunk behind Angela, and a little bit behind William. Okay. I think Angela and William both understand that it's between them now. Yeah. I think they both get that because Mikhail made his big play, got his big advanced tech, flipped his one fed. He maybe has one more fed coming. Yeah. It's it's not looking great for him. And then and and Vlad has all his feds to come, but has been beaten to the top of the track he was working on, and he's only up one tech track. So I think Angela and William both realize that they are in a two-person race at this point. Yeah. yeah. And so I think maybe if you're talking about her spending those QICs to go over there on the tile nine, that's a move she's taking away from William instead of maybe as much of what it is for herself. But he doesn't have QICs at the exact moment, and he also has plenty of green to get to. So I don't think yeah. that really cut him out of anything. And that's not really a place he wants to put a, a mine right now anyway, because it's no. not connecting up to his federations very well. He's going to 10, like, clearly, and then he would expand over on 6 because it's a bit shorter. He has passed the card to you. If he needed yeah. that extra, yeah. Right, and he's gonna he's gonna put at least one more guy former out, maybe two. We may see no one get to the top of the of the purple track, which is also interesting. Well, uh, it's advanced tactile isn't that uh, exciting anymore as well because it's just or I believe, right? Uh, yeah, you he William would want to be the, the top of it for just the uh, score points for every right. green planet you're on plus four. Oh, then yeah. we get a shot of. Last year's winner, Hans Lee, behind William there. And wouldn't you know it, it just happened. The 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 play that we've been talking about the whole game, Nikhil <laughs> takes that green planet from Flato. For three Vlado's points. shaking his head. He's saying, you know what? I had my plans. I, yeah, I, again, little little sympathy for, for that one. Uh, <laughs> but there it is. Yes, that. The, 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 the. <laughs> The moment of the game, WSBG's <laughs> moment of the game, brought to you by Game Theory Tables and the Taclons. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's worth three points to him, right? Why not? And he's going to he's gonna make a fed there. Uh, he could have had the, the Gaia former out forever on that trans to make the fed a little easier. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, why not? And really... Why, why wait? You know, if you're if you're Vlad, why wait? He went before him in this round as well. He could have gotten even this round, but uh, I understand why Mikhail did it now. You know, yeah, because it, it's extra it points. Gets the points. Yeah, 
and maybe they were both th- looking, eyeing this round for a time when they were going to do it. Uh, I think Mikhail has been very, what what he's done really well in this game is identified where other people's points might come from and and taken them for his own points where he could. Yeah. I think he's he's seen that well. Uh, Williams launching some purples, decides he doesn't need as many as he has anymore. Uh, and he makes a QIC with them, which will inevitably get him on a green planet somewhere for some points. Look at that. No wonder... I wonder if, I mean, we knew that was coming. I wonder if Vlad knew that was coming or not. Yeah. Uh, he, he does look a little dejected here, a little frustrated. I think uh, I think Vlad has been feeling the, the the tiredness more than the other three at this table. I think maybe there was some extra extra cramming time that uh, that he felt needed to happen, and it's been feeling he's he's been he's been showing the signs of. Of pulling the hood close and just like, I, trying to I keep agree that, that focus. Yeah, I agree with that. He's making his first fed here, uh, but I yeah I totally think it's it's gotten away from him. The he lost the race up the terraforming track. William got got him with with taking the the guy a former he was thinking about. Now he's lost this other green planet to the Taclons. It, it just like keeps snowballing. And, and not going the way he's hoping, I think. And I think it's uh, I think it's kind of a realization, a realization mm-hmm. right? When you're at these semifinal tables, you know what's on the line. You know what yeah, you can get yeah. for getting to the next level. You do the practice. You do the, the prep work. You know, you weren't very strong or understood guy or project super well going in, but you spent a lot of time on it with the hopes yeah. that you could. And then over the course of a four-hour game, as it unravels and things don't go your way, you know, I think anybody can relate to that kind of frustration where it's it's difficult and and for sure yeah. when, when you're tired and you you have these other things you want to do and it's just not working out. But there seems to be some kind of rules question about his federation here. No, 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 it's okay. It's okay because the way yours works is you track it in every seven. Okay, not exactly sure what they're Vlado, showing him. Vlado, I think Vlado was saying was worried was worried that his, his stuff was too together that he wouldn't be able to make multiple federations. And, uh, but his faction makes his lots of them in one area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you have to be separated. But uh, yep. but Vlado doesn't okay, have to worry there, about it. You could see the the relief <laughs> wash over his face. Like, come on, please, not one more thing. Have <laughs> I have I planned this so poorly from the beginning? But no, he's no. It he's works. Okay. It works similar to how he wants. He's still gonna have to spend, and this is why he's been hoarding his QIC. But mm-hmm. it's also why I I didn't like where he jumped early. Is he's gonna connect all those other buildings in? It's yeah. just gonna cost him QIC to do it. Yeah. And those were those are just a bunch of resources that could be points, you know. Yeah. That's, that's really where he gets to. Here we see Angela has moved to the top of the green track, got even more QIC. Yeah. She essentially is going to have more feds than she can flip efficiently. So she's now she's taken that same action. So she's getting it anyway where she's not she's getting the d- colors and points and she wasn't yeah. on green before so now it kind of chains more together why she built on that green one right uh, it wasn't so much to stop william it it helps her in more than one way and she got the thing QIC. done anyway yeah i i would have been worried that the other players with their qic's like those actions might not wheel back to me but mm-hmm. because she correctly read the board and they did wheel back to her uh, it it ends up being worth even more points. So good on her for a good play there. That makes a lot of sense. And I think really she only has to worry about about Vlado with QIC because it it seems like Williams doesn't have as much or will want to be using that. He's to gonna, do the yeah, green, he's going to build on green. green planets. So she's and pretty open she, there. She's correctly identified. And and maybe if you're at the table, you, you see it. He sat on those QICs the whole game. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. been the whole game. So yeah. he's clearly just using those for satellites at this point. Yeah. It doesn't seem like you have to worry too much about him taking the public actions. 
uh, that you're interested in taking. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if Mikhail can get another Fed done in time and, and if he wants to get to the top of the blue track. And then if Angela decides she wants to get to the top of the blue track, because if she gets to the top of the blue track, that's essentially a whole other track she runs up, which right now is probably navigation. Uh, she has another bump this turn. And if Mikhail does not, if he passes before he makes another Fed, then she'll probably run up to the top of the blue and get that. At the top of blue, you get an instant nine knowledge. So, you know, that's yeah. two more bumps essentially that's by huge. itself. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's essentially, it could be 12 points, right? Yeah. If you manage to bump up yourself. And and if if Angela comes out ahead here, right, we know that it's from the tech tracks. I think I think Williams missed opportunity was the the build on green for three points tile, and Angela's advantageous point is how many points more she's going to make on the tech tracks than all the other players. Like Vlad and William both right now are only making one tech tracks worth of points, so Williams at eight, and Vlad is at eight. And right now, before we even spend everything, uh, Angela's at 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. So she is plus 20 yeah. on unfactored. Uh, and she's already got a lead on the board right now, just on the scoring track. So those are just things to, yeah. to, be, to be aware mindful of. of. Yeah, when you're way behind someone on tech track, you do not want to be behind them on like federations and end game scoring and total score. Yeah. Yeah. And so they're really having the time conversation now about if they're going to get to finish the game or not. We should all know whether this is the last round or not at some point. I think so. It's 1215. Yeah. And again, I can't, I can't speak highly enough of Josh. Uh, I think he does a great job communicating his stuff and, and, you know, he's put in a position here where he has to communicate from the people yeah. who are running the event. Hey, this is the rules. But also, you know, everybody's got their time. Are you fine saying about how long, how many more actions you And And just a little spoiler, we know they get to finish the game. Yeah. They get to end up doing all six turns. Yeah. So uh, they do play a full game. But obviously it's nerve-wracking for everybody at the table to maybe not get that six turn. For sure. And I think especially William here, yeah, as he's I pointed out, clear. his game plan is is turn six. He has a turn six plan. His his none of his plans work for five. Yeah. He can't have the game end on five. Yeah, he says, Listen, I I need to know, am I like am I federating? Am I not? Like we don't want them to come in later. Yeah, and I, I wonder too how much of last turns like you know rush all the feds was a part of that as well. You know, hey, we might have to cut this game short. Like, oh well, shoot, we I need to get some feds and get these turned into points. Yeah, certainly possible. Of course, we can see behind Mikael that they're uh, they're still playing Arc Nova over there. So Guy Project yeah. has not uh, overrun everyone else quite yet. Yeah, Josh making the call right there. He says, "I think we can do it." <laughs> I think we can play a full game. Don't make me regret it. <laughs> Time he's saying to the players. In the, yeah, I think that's. I think it's totally reasonable, and and a good idea, a smart move from William to say, "Hey, I need yeah. to know." Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Totally. I need to know, and and to get a clear answer, and for everybody to kind of consensus and understand. Yeah. Are you, are, you, are you prohibited from playing something that would merge two federations? Oh. William's asking if you're prohibited by into playing something that would merge two federations. And and you are. Uh, you cannot. Oh, you can play a. Like, can he build on what's the hypothetical? Like, he could. I think put, he's, no, he yeah, could put his. He could put his transdim on that. Once yeah. they're made, it's okay. So yeah. Words, yeah. Format, you will not yeah. Once they're made, you can't. Uh, you can't put a federation together that would run into a different federation. So if he tried to federate his right planets and and he needed to get all the way to board six and he had to cut through other feds to do it, you couldn't yeah. do that. But he can absolutely put his Gaia former. It is funny after you ask, you know, hey, I really need to know, are we going to get this done? And then. 
and then you ask a question that makes Josh go to the rule book is is yeah. that's just fun <laughs> stuff right there to I'm tease sorry, Josh. It's not a legal play. It just it has no effect if you connect the two federations. But it would affect this. It would give you one. Yes. It would. So give it, you it will be a building yeah, in federation. You can add a building to your federation that way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all of that stuff works. Uh, they're good questions. They're certainly yeah. things that if you're not experienced with the game oh yeah make total sense to ask and uh and certainly i could understand where they could go either way you know if you're yeah. i'm i'm really impressed by by william i think william's only played like two games of gaia project right obviously crammed the night before and is has his head full of gaia but uh william's making it uh some some tight competition on angela for sure yes yeah i like i like a lot of what he's done and uh you know, I don't know, I don't know his his personality well enough to know if he's the kind of guy who can appreciate how well he did, or if he's going to kick himself for uh, not buying the green tile that I wanted right, him to buy the whole right. game. <laughs> but I think uh, I think he has a lot to be proud of for sure. And I, like I say, I think he's the kind of guy who can do that because he was a, a ticket to ride final tableist yeah. last year. And then he came back and won it this year. I'm yeah. always there's a lot of good WSBG stories like that that I'm always impressed and happy with. Yeah. Luca to get second at brass, you know, the whole reason he went in year one, he, and he's gonna mm -hmm. she finally went down to six or six. There we go. He went for brass and he was so excited to go the whole time and, and then he got all the way to the final and he gets second place, you know, and they go all super late. It would be really easy to take the next day and be like, you know what? Things didn't go out my way. I'm disappointed. Yeah. I'm sad. Instead, he just comes back and wins four straight rounds of Azul and wins the <laughs> ring, you know, like on the yeah. next day. I don't yeah. know if I could bounce back like that. Yeah. And same thing with William to, to get a final table and not win and to come back the next year and get the win. Mm -hmm. Super, super awesome story for him. So all these players to, to bounce back from, you know. Excellent. I think William also won. Uh, we have some regional regional qualifiers that are happening that are around around the way I've been setting them up, and I think I think William also won the Adepticon uh, regional qualifier. So so was, was it this to, year? Or last year? Um, I, I think la last year because the Adept oh, Adepticon year. one just happened. But in order to yeah. get his spot into uh, into into this this oh, tournament, awesome. you know, was able to go through the regional qualifiers and uh, get get a ticket, get a get a, I think a full stay and play, and uh, and then manages to make himself uh, into the finals. Two final tables. It's a pretty exciting, That's awesome, exciting thing. That's awesome. And I know Nick Henning was a, a judge at uh, Dice Tower West. They mm -hmm. did a qualifier, and he said that was super fun, and everybody had a good time. A little like yeah. mini WSBG at Di Dice Tower West. So yeah. if you're interested in D WSBG, I really do endorse it. Like honestly, they. They don't pay me or anything. I'm just, I really like it. Uh, and I think if you like games, you probably like it. But if you just like games and you're not sure and it's really expensive or whatever, uh, from talking to Nick, they, they ran a little mini one at Dice Tower West. So if you want to see if it's your thing, you can go to Dice Tower West, play board games all week, and and then play in the little mini WSBG. Yeah. And then if you, if you have fun with that, you can decide – you know, in a, in a future September that it makes sense for you or not. Uh, but or you I think can win you your go, way there. You, you can win at a qualifier. You can do, yeah, lots of different options. Uh, you can get the discount codes that Chris talked about earlier. There's, It's accessible. If you, if you want to go, everyone can make an excuse why they can't go. That's what I found out. But uh, if you want to go, you can go. Yeah, we have one if you're in the uh, San Francisco area. We have one at KublaCon, and KublaCon's uh, even going to give uh, like a $400 flight voucher to the winner as well to like awesome. you know, enter for 15 bucks for an entry, potentially get a trip to Vegas. That's, that'll yeah. be that'll be end of May. $1,200 prize for 15 bucks. Yeah, and if you worth, if you playing. otherwise you pay 15 bucks to play board games. Yeah, I, I I like board games. So <laughs> I I've always been a fan of these things called board games. <laughs> <laughs> so Vlad's making his fed here. He did have to spend one QIC to make the the first satellite, and then eventually mm -hmm. it'll cost him either one or two more, uh, depending on if he waits till next turn or not to chain up the other the other buildings. Uh, poor Josh. I, th I think we can get it done. We're gonna play fast. All right. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. 
lots of complicated <laughs> rule stuff and, and thinking. Yeah, um, you can feel it's it's this is this is a tough one. You know, you can feel the you can feel the tension. I feel ramp up a little bit around the table. More more from from William. I think William knows he he's got a shot. I think he recognizes that Angela feels still a little bit in the lead, even just looking at that point tracker and Angela's presence on the tech tracks. Uh, but but I think William knows that that he's still got he's got a shot at it, and so he's he's feeling that he's feeling that climb after the leader right now. Absolutely. And and the thing about Guy Project, right? It's all calculatable. You can mm -hmm. you can see how many points everybody has on the tech tracks. You can count whatever else you can really figure out how many buildings everybody's going to have in fed. And mm -hmm. I think what William really wants is for all of his buildings to be in feds, but also he wants Angela to lose on, on those. Yeah. Overall game goals. He wants Vlad to s scoot into the lead. Like they're, they're really tight right now. Mm -hmm. Vlad's going to probably get all his buildings into fed by the end of the game. And if that can stay ahead of Angela, you know, that's William's best case scenario. Uh, Angela's probably got to carve out another fed now because it's only needs to be six strength. Mm -hmm. It should be pretty easy for her to do that. Uh, it's tough, though. She doesn't have much on the board that isn't connected. It's just that one down on tile six, I think. Right. And I think William, William not having the QIC to steal that green yeah. is going to allow her to do it because she has that green and that brown. Yeah. And she's going to probably get those things. Uh, and that's going to be really tough for William because he could have taken that green the whole game. Yeah. And, and it's going to end up being the green that probably gets Angela her third fed. Well, I think, yeah, it's or tough, though. W oh, William no, William no, prioritized no. putting that up in the top right corner on the green this round. Uh, because, because it's his he, fed. He, yeah. It's his fed, right? So it's kind of give and take. But he could have he just built it there next round. You know, it's the same number of right. points, but he could have kind of blocked this one in. And again, I think I, think I would have, like, there it is. I would have liked to see the the Terrans have two federations down here uh, instead of just the kind of one big one. He he rushed it, and he yeah. hasn't flipped any yet. And that was the concern at the time was that he was going to, you know, he built these. And they did send a pretty strong message. They said, hey, you know, I'm at the top of this track. You probably don't want to mess with me. Yeah. I'm going to take these if you come anywhere close. Of course, Mikhail has never been deterred by anyone saying how I'm going to get these points. He says, yeah. I I will challenge you at every place. Yeah, Mikhail, Mikhail has been uh, just everywhere in this game, it feels. You know, just pushing, yeah. pushing, working, working hard, like keeping on pushing forward. It's been it's been very exciting to to see. And that's also the sort of game that I love to play in. You know, you, you get into games where even if you're trailing behind, uh, it's it's that idea of what do you do, what moves do you take, and, and I feel like all the players at this table just they play to win, they play to make the best score that yeah. they can, you know, they take the actions that benefit them the best that they think. They don't take it to to deny points from a certain leader to give somebody else points. They're like, no, this is this is what I believe the optimal move is, and they and they go for it. And that's and that's the format. That is what is unique uh wsbg right a lot of people are like well you should you should give something a second you should do whatever the format here and what's been built is you know it's about winning like getting yeah. second on a tiebreaker getting second uh overall third overall just it doesn't matter in this tournament and and yeah. like it or hate it that is the way it is and these players all adapt to that really well they all mm -hmm. play uh, for first, for their most points, for their most optimal plays. It makes total sense. Yeah, I saw that a lot in uh, in Raw specifically because you sometimes you got to play to win, and that might mean hoping you draw and you go on a run. Uh, but like you, you can't just play denial if it'll be your last turn of the game. And they recognize they're like they're like okay if I if I take this right now I can block him but I lose so like I I literally can't do this move. Right? Raw is a tough one for me because yeah. I I am one of the worst raw players in the world. <laughs> but I I was playing raw at Prezcon, and we were in the uh, in, in a match a four player match and it was a uh, a guy 
had it. I could only, I was the only one to stop him, right? The other experienced players were like, ah, oh, you'll have yeah. to buy this because otherwise this guy, and it was likely that if he bought these tiles, he was going to win. But it was also likely if I bought these tiles, I was going to lose. Yeah. And so it's like, this is a you can't tough do position. It. Like, I, yeah, I can't buy these tiles to stop hmm. him from winning and make myself lose. Like, yeah, you just can't do it. That's not good. Uh, and I think we're, we're seeing that from, from everybody here. You know, people are prioritizing their own points. William prioritizing the chance of his fed. You know, Mikhail getting that green t- so he can get that fed on the right. Yeah, that, that fed, uh, like I say, I, that's a, a fortunate fed, fed for Mikhail, I think, that he's going to mm-hmm. be able to get. You, you definitely want three, but he's at least going to get the second because Vlad waited so long to mm-hmm. not take that green. Uh, he is going to go for a yellow planet here, trying to get just a big chain. He's trying to compete in the the most buildings and, and stuff as well. And generally, Taclons are pretty good at that. But I think I think what happened here is he just did not make the resources early enough. To, and yeah. now, now you're seeing it at the end when he's trying to have... They're all pretty close right now on buildings. And then you figure most of them will be in fed. Mm-hmm. And so those end games are tight. But he's kind of almost done. And everybody else has some space to expand into. And so we'll just have to see if he's if he's able. But I think that's the idea of getting on yellow instead mm-hmm. of just building up the ones he has to, to make that federation as wide as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and again, and I make that. I plan. think he just hasn't cared at all about the fact that he's had a Gaia former the whole game. Right. You know, he ran out of power kind of early, but if he had just put that down, you know, that'd be another planet in that same chain. I'm I'm a little surprised Angela passed here without taking the tech tile to bump her up on tracks. Uh, oh, she wants to, it's because she wants to, she doesn't want to upgrade buildings that are already in her fed. She wants to upgrade the buildings right. down on tile six, and she didn't have enough to do both this round. So yeah. she's just gonna wait. It doesn't really cost her anything probably costs her one knowledge maybe and it we know she's got a lot to upgrade down there in order to make yeah. that a fed right oh well, not too much because the xenos only need the six and she's right. so she's so good at terraforming that brown is just two or you know super cheap that's she's true making she finally did the the mine thing we we thought she was going to do all game look at her mines now or mm-hmm. um, making her a ton of ore on the last turn she already makes a lot of money which is great uh, so that that's all good stuff for her. She's gonna make another QIC because that's the the Xenos just do that. William she, having a pretty dominant uh, like board position though in terms of the amount of buildings. Like William's got all of his trading posts out there and only three mines left. That's that's a thing that Terrence can yeah. run into where they run out of buildings. Like you're right. trying to get more and more buildings and you run out of mines. Uh, it, it's not terribly uncommon for them but mm-hmm. i think he would already be there if he had gotten up a little higher on the gaia track because he'd be putting those gaia formers out all over the place right i also think that and he may or may not have thought of this part but because vlad and mikhail were both on the gaia track he may have shied away from going too far right. up that track because he was afraid that the purple planets would just be gone like there there'd be nothing left so yeah that by the middle push. part of the game yeah turn one mm-hmm. yeah by the middle part of the game, it's, it became pretty clear that the Taclons didn't have the power to compete. And then when the when he took it from the Ivets, then it was yeah. Then it was time to be like, oh, okay, I'm gonna be good at guy for him. <laughs> and so we're on to round six. They made it. They did it. They get to play a sixth round. They get to play a sixth round, which depending upon who you are, you might be excited about that or not. <laughs> Yeah, I think, well, let's say, I mean, since it was possible, we can kind of go through it. To me, it just looks like Angela blows everybody out if they end yeah, up five. Yeah, if they end up five, for sure. Like, she wins buildings and fed because they, they didn't go, and they all tie at, at regular buildings, so those three just get 12 and Brown gets nothing. She's yeah. got way more tech points. Like, if they, and she's already ahead on the on the scoring. 
Yeah. If they ended at five, of course, they would have done some things different. People would have played different. But as the board stands now... I don't see a world in which anyone other than Angela wins at five. By by a significant margin, yeah. 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 So everybody else, you know, wanted it to go to six. Uh, And I think she's also fine going to six, right? I think her plan showed us Mm -hmm. she had some good plans for going long term. Yeah, uh, she wants that. She wants that Fed down in that left corner, and she wants to upgrade that last science building. That's what she's going to focus on, and she wants to run some tracks up just for the points. We yeah, might see be, that knowledge push, I think, right? To just to. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And then and I think it'll be interesting if she takes the advanced tech for two points for every bump, or if she just takes seven points, because mm-hmm. they might be if if Mikael gets his Fed done right away and then takes the top of the blue track, you know, right. then then the advanced tech at the top of green doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. And so because seven you can points. only have one person at the top of each tech track, similar right. to Terra Mystica. Right. So the seven points overall, or the two points per tech bump, might end up being negligible. Yeah. Uh, but since Mikael is showing he might use his Fed to try and steal the the advanced tech, of course William's going to take that. He's going to, mm-hmm. whenever whenever Mikael says, I have a federation and I'm right below this advanced tech, William's going to be like, okay, that's my tech tile. Yeah. I'm going to take yeah. it. And in a perfect world for him, he's going to build his federation first so that he can get 15 out of it instead of 10. Yeah. Yeah, clearly what he's been waiting on all game. Yeah, it's it's impressive to me that, that William was able to go up. I, I've said it a couple of times now, but that he was able to go up the navigation track mm-hmm. and kind of lock in that tile. Yeah. Because that tile is generally so fought after, you know, people people make bad plays to get that tile. It's, right. It's a very sought after tile. Uh, it's also, I don't know if Vlad or Angela care about it. The four points for trading post could be worth something. Uh, right. Vlad really has nothing else to do with his feds. So building up some trading posts. It doesn't feel like that's good for Angela at all. She's sitting yeah. on uh, her four trading posts and her, her pathway and what she's going to spend things on are going to be drop her last mine on the brown, upgrade one of them, the one on the yellow, to a trading post because it's cheaper. And then turn that into science. Turn that into science. Fed. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, Seven she's points. Not gonna, right. Yeah. And then she's going to get five for making it big if she if she wants to go that route. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, yeah. She's not in the trading post game, so Vlad's got that without without somebody stepping on his toes if that's what he decides to do. Uh, It'll be interesting. I I still like it. I like what I like about Angela's game here is she's left herself options at every step, right? Like early Mm -hmm. on, she had expansion and knowledge. And then middle game, she had mines and knowledge and tech tracks. And now we're at the end of the game and she can build big buildings for lots of points or build lots of science buildings for points. Or she can, you know, build another federation. What, What she's done well is just always have options. And when people got in her way, she always had a pivot. Like, she yeah. just, like, oh, well, you're going up blue. No problem. I'll go up brown. No, I'm going to steal this Fed. I'm going to do this over here. Uh, okay, now everybody's in the way on all these other things. That's fine. I'll run up green. No one else is on green. And, yeah. And use those resources very efficiently for even more points. And so I think those were all really smart moves and parts of her game that I liked. Yeah. And I, uh, I liked a lot of what William did as well. Like I say, I think he had a really good vision of how he was going to play these guys kind of the whole way. Yeah, for sure. So he's taking his... Let's see if he's going for advance now for 10 or if he's going to try and risk it to wait till 15 because Mikhail does not have a Fed to threaten Mm -hmm. him with. Uh, I would risk it at this point. I, I think yeah, the more he needs to maximize every point he can get, so I would yeah. as well. But he needs to take a tactile here for for building that science building. Can't pass the card yet. Mm, he's saying I think he just said to himself, that's why I maybe should have taken it later. <laughs> Not quite sure. Well he's, he seems 
Yeah, he seems a little frustrated, like, oh, if I get this three power. Uh, but he has to take a tech tile that lets him move up on that track. And he's going to go with that one. I also think seven points here is almost certainly better than whatever yeah. that four charge is going to get him. You know, maybe he'll get during the turn, but we we know he's going to probably take an advanced tech. Yeah. So it and seems it seems like the seven would have been seven. Yeah, would I would definitely right take there. seven here instead of charge four. Like right now, that charge four does very little for him. Yeah, because he's forced to take three new power. I guess he can empty it. What he's probably worried about is having enough satellites to connect. But he only needs one, two, three, four satellites, right, to connect. Yeah, he's no, he's got enough. Yeah, he, he's yeah, got enough. He burnt his I think power it's up five. Top. One, two, three, four. It's four for that little U shape around yeah. the PI, and then two more, so six. He already had enough. Yeah, he didn't need those oh, three two, for it. Two I more think to connect. Yeah. Where's the two more that would connect? Because so we're connecting he, all three of his green, right? Uh, it's four of green, or does he? Because he needs seven. Uh, yeah. Oh, down the green. That's there. There's a yeah, green. Yeah, two on ten, one fence. on yeah. two, and one on three. And the green on three. I didn't see that one. Yeah. The one that he just upgraded. Yeah, the one that he just Right, upgraded. and so now he has seven, I believe. It's, or no, he has two trading posts and two mines, so he's at six strength on it. Uh, Angela did move up on the blue, which which cuts... Uh, Mikiel can't get to the top of the blue before her, so she's going to mm -hmm. bump up there for what is essentially a free eight points. Because she's going to yeah. move up both tracks, flip her fed, and then refund all that knowledge she just spent. Uh, so... Yeah, a really, Super good. really great play. Super good. And then she's going to use that rest of that knowledge to run up the navigation track, which is more points and resources. And she doesn't have to worry about going up the, the econ and, and Gaia, which would do her no good right now. Uh, so she's going to spend all of her knowledge efficiently. We're hearing a celebration in the background. Gaia looks behind them and sees that Ark Nova is finished. <laughs> um, we heard a big roar. Uh, Yuka, if you haven't seen that, well, spoiler alert, Yuka's moved on into the finals. Uh, and Yuka being the only person who had never played Arc Nova, a lot of people at that table, uh, including the 2023 Gaia Project winner, um, had chosen Arc Nova as some of their ring events to participate in. And Yuka learned, learned it the night before uh, and was able to, to speed the end of the game. It was a very exciting game. It was uh, commented on by Matthias Viga, the designer, uh, who participated in the Arc Nova tournament, and also by Tom Vassell. We live-streamed that one uh, in September. Yep. Yeah, that was a another match that was certainly exciting, and also people were tired. <laughs> For sure. A long week. A long week. Uh, some really good players at that table, though. I know I got to go to PrezCon with Jonathan, and uh, what a classy guy he is. I like him a lot. And uh, and then I know Michael, that one wingspan. Yuka was great in brass. I had the honor of losing to him at brass. <laughs> felt, felt good. Yeah, it always feels good when, you know, at least they went on to win. <laughs> you were basically second. Yeah, pretty much. What's the difference? There's no... <laughs> Um, but yeah, so Angela's going to gonna top the blue track here. Mm -hmm. William's now building, looks like a big building. It's an expensive thing. Oh, see, that's going to cut him out of another planet and fed because now, now that's a strength oh, no. four. Yeah. And so the fed's going to be smaller. And this was his most efficient way to get the, the Federation tile. So he's going to get points right now. Right. But he... I would I would have made the Fed first. I would have yeah. developed the Fed, and then in order to capitalize on that on that tectile. Instead, he's gonna he's pushing forward on Gaia. Yeah, he's racking the Gaia. He's gonna take knowledge for different colors. So we know he's on green, white, and blue. Uh, he's at nine right now, so that would be another tech bump. But he already had enough tech bumps to kind of yeah. get him where he needed to go he could still take that wild seven it's surprising that we haven't seen that yet especially in this last round yeah yeah he has i mean all the all the options are fine for him 
It's he's, true. He does have so many trading posts on the board that it's not it's not difficult for him to to upgrade and get additional tech tiles. Like it's not as hard for him to get a tech tile this round as it is for everybody else. Right, but he's yeah. So this this play is probably worth four points, and the seven points, of course, is just worth seven points. Yeah. So well, I guess it's it's bump and bump again. So it might be worth eight. This might be worth one extra. Uh, than the seven. <laughs> yeah, does get does get that power into bowl two. Doesn't have to worry about connecting. Yeah, now now is he's gonna have one less building in fed. We'll see if that ends up mattering. Uh, but yeah, it's, well he might con he might just connect everything for his fed right because he has four and then they're all mines. Oh no, those some of them are trading posts. You're right. I thought one of them. I could be yeah. wrong. If they're all mines, then it's fine. But I thought the one on the bottom part of ten was a trading post. Yeah, it does look like that from here. And we know he has three trading posts out, so it's difficult from the yeah. to identify exactly all of them. But and then we know he's trying to build a mine on the uh, on six to connect all his stuff up as well. But mm -hmm. I don't think that makes much of a difference either because he didn't, you know, he doesn't get points for building on green. But I think it would help him with his buildings in a federation because he's yeah, it's one, it's one, it's always one more building in fed. Uh, but he just cost himself a building in fed. So yeah. it's, it's a give and take there. Yeah, again, awesome thought process, really good stuff, mm -hmm. and just the inexperience uh, to execute everything at perfect efficiency, whereas Angela's experience with the game is allowing her to, like, notice, oh, shoot, I can get to the top of the blue track right. for essentially free. Yeah. Well, I'm going to do that. Uh, yeah, her, her experience, this is the experience I think is really paying off here. Where where William's plans were really good, and mm -hmm. Angela's plans were good too, but her experience allowed her to just effectively execute everything. Yeah, I found I, it's still I'm I'm surprised to see I mean I guess I shouldn't beat about I'm surprised to see that Angela will get that additional federation down in the bottom because because her it felt like her expansion really had that moment of grinding to a halt right. But yeah, she turned it all into knowledge, and yeah. now she's turning it all back into <laughs> into building power. And you yeah. see her shooting up that navigation track. Yep, it's the next place she gets points. And now, yeah. why would I spend a, a QIC to get to the brown planet when I can when I can do it for free? You know, yeah. it's it's in range. William can't possibly cut me off for it. It's it's free. Yeah, the uh, timing. I think I think the. The main difference that that we've seen, although Williams has some really lovely timing again with that that sniping of Vlado's, uh, all of Vlado's hopes and dreams, um, but uh, Angela's timing has felt like she's read the state, the board, and the players really well throughout this game, yep. knowing totally when she agree. needs to pull the trigger and knowing when she can sit back and uh, and and wait a little bit. Absolutely, she's done that really well. What's crazy too is usually on the last round of the game. The very first actions to go are, are the two green ones that score a lot of points. And uh, you really want to be saving up for those on the last mm -hmm. turn to get it done. And we're, we're not seeing that right this time. Nobody's taken an action yet. Vlad has a ton of QIC. Yeah. I'm not sure he knows. He only needs the one you know QIC to federate. Yeah. He's not really in a race for anything anymore. He's got this. It's going to happen. So now those QICs, the most efficient way to spend them is to put them into the the public actions. Yeah. And I think he's going to get away with it here because it doesn't look like anybody else can pressure him. Yeah. So hopefully for him, he'll still be able to get those done. But uh, usually in, in a Game of Gaia project, it, you're really planning to have those QICs ready to go when you start round six because they're like the first things that people do. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the seven pointer as well. I think William floating around, maybe federating, but deciding well, he, what he needs to do. I think he wants to spend his purple chips on a public action before mm. he federates, which is efficient. And 
he wants to make sure he gets that feder. I, I would really want to make sure if I was him, I get that federation done before I pick up the tech tile. So you don't yeah. want to build. Uh, oh, I think he's also thinking to himself, oh, if I build a, a science station, that's going to lose a trading post. And when I pass at the end of the turn, passing for trading points is point mm -hmm. posts is points. But he has plenty of time to, to rebuild them if he if he decides that's what he wants to do. I think I heard him saying resources are worth points at the end of the game and just trying to find the optimal conversion right there now. There you go. Before yep. he yeah, needs to, it is. Yeah. He's correct. It is money. If you're just turning resources into points at the end, the the four purple chips for seven uh, money is the most points you can get from a public action. Uh, there's Angela building the mine. We always yep. knew she was gonna. And Angela's again, got right, her plan in place. Nothing really in her way. Right after William spends his. <laughs> power again she yeah. gives him a charge yeah she's so friendly to charge him every time he puts him <laughs> in vault three he didn't even take it for free he was like whatever it doesn't matter yeah those are satellites yeah. Vlad's gonna upgrade give himself an extra mine available trouble charge and then let's say Mikhail's probably going to federate soon. Once well, he he does not have enough strength yet. He has to upgrade. He's gonna spend his knowledge first, and he's gonna get some charge and terraform better, which is probably just getting four points. He said, "I'm gonna turn this one and a third point of knowledge into four points." Yeah, and charge three while I'm at it. So honestly, he did pretty well on the on the tech tracks, right? He's yeah. He's now into four tech tracks or scoring in points, uh, so he did fairly well in that part of the game. But as we as we mentioned earlier, I think if if Brown had had a good setup, and, yeah. And this is just a guess from me, but I think he came into the game and he said, "I know I'm seat one." You know, people I talked to said yeah. take tacklons. And I think he knew when he sat down what he was going to pick. Uh, and and knew what he was going to do or how, how he was thinking to play them. Like, you know, get the charge four tile. That's important. Yeah. Whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And and then kind of looking at yeah. the board yeah. afterward and, yeah. and being like, oh, my gosh, Brown is in a tough spot. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and I don't know that, but I would guess that something to that effect happened. Yeah, or, or he knows the Taclon's playbook, right? We need to get that cycle, and uh, and he went for it, but it, he just fell victim to the asymmetry of the board that we were talking about and how the tech tiles are always different. And um, that's one of the, again, the, the huge benefits that Gaia Project has over uh, Terra Mystica. It's that all this variability that is just makes it so exciting and different every time. It's, it's, uh, it helps an experienced player because being able to read those things uh, I love the Taclons, but this was a, this was a board that was just going to be very difficult to yeah. play Taclons successfully on. Uh, well, now William gets a charge that slightly matters. Angela, you know, being yeah. nice to him finally, giving him a little something. Angela upgrading that as the trading post. Is her one on the yellow already a trading post? I no. guess she didn't want to give him so much charge. Yeah, since he had spent the satellites... Yeah, I probably would have made him pay the two because if he had taken three charge for two points and then turned it into let's say two or, it yeah. probably wasn't gonna benefit him. So I probably would have tried to make him pay the points, but she decides, take your one. I'm I'm not worried about it. Yeah, you know, get one one third of a point with money or whatever. We do see with that with that federate action, William jumps ahead into the lead. Um, but and again, we know Angela, he's going to get another, he's going to get another 15 from when he takes his advanced tech, yeah. but Angela is going to get another 12 from her, uh, it really is back and fed. forth. Yeah. Her fed's going to be worth 12 for the point. Plus she's almost certainly going to build up to her, her big building for another five. So, well, she might go little buildings cause they're three each when she passes. So they're all they're all on the table as options. Yeah, w William clarifying. How can I get that tile now? <laughs> how does yeah? How does getting this tile work? So please. Fortunately I, for William, it's gonna 
it's going to work oh, yeah. exactly oh, yeah. how he wants it to, as he's going to pay three ore and five money and put one of those science thingies down and pick it up. Because he has lots of feds to flip. Honestly, he should, and we'll see if he does this, he has enough knowledge to get to the top of purple. When you take an advanced tech, you get to act like it's a wild card tech, so you get to go up on any track. And he has yeah. two federations to flip. Oh, he took the 12. If he had not taken the 12 and he had taken the 7, the 7 comes with 6 money. So essentially factor that that's two more points when you talk about resources. So that's a 9-point right. tile. So if he had done that, he could have essentially gotten 9 points instead of 12, so a minus 3. But then he could have flipped it, and he would have 3 to flip, and then he could take the advanced tech at the top of navigation, get to the top of navigation, get to the lost planet, and right. still have a fed to flip to get to the top of purple. Yeah. Yeah. And just getting to the top of Lost Planet makes you another four points. So that's plus one over what he did. And he would uh, place the Lost Planet out, and he could place it in between his Federation. So it's another building and another building of Fed. Yeah. So a lot of things that he could have done. Like the 12 is almost always efficient at the end of the game. Uh, but in this case, the money would have been better. Right. Yeah, just giving that flexibility. Angela upgraded well, the trading posts. Another trading post there. That's uh, a that's surprising. I expected to see just the science. Yeah, me too. I am I am surprised. She looks like she's gonna go for the three trading post plan, which I don't love. Because that's not her past tile. That's the that's what I think William's sitting on that trading post past tile. Yeah, no, yeah. She has the small has science large, building yeah. past tile. Right, and Mikhail has a, the large building passed. Uh, no one took no. the large building. It, it's I think there. it got passed at the end of the round. Right. Uh, but that, yeah, certainly that was a one that anyone would have wanted this round if they could have got it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm interested with her going with those. But, but definitely, again, William, uh, good plan, not the, not the experience to know how to, how to pay them all off. Because he he he's gonna miss out on on points and another planet and and I don't know this is a tight race for buildings and buildings and fed mm -hmm. uh, right now Vlad Vlad's gonna win both at the current pace but Angela's gonna Angela's gonna pass him once she puts those three into fed he's getting all of his into fed so. Oh, maybe he won't. Those two down on blue and white might not be able to make a fed efficiently. Yeah, it's a really tough. It's a. It's. It really is a race to the finish. Okay. Well, and like I say, I how I like to play Ivets is not to build them so wide that they're really competing in buildings mm -hmm. in buildings and fed that I don't think that's their optimal game plan. And I think this is an example of, of, of Vlad's doing a really good job of competing on these end game goals. And it's not going to get him as many points as the work he's putting into it. Mm -hmm. it it's a lot of work for, for what's going to end up not being a lot of points, especially I think people get a little like starstruck, like, Ooh, 18 points, 18 points is a lot of points. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. But it's only six more points than whoever gets second. And it's only twelve yeah. more points. That, so you're really only eighteen points over one person. Yeah. Yeah, Vlad making a nice. The first time we see someone pull the seven. Yep, absolutely. That up. Yeah. Good idea. And now he has to go up on a tech track, which, uh, which I guess has to be purple. Terrible. But it's the closest he can get to points. Yeah. Or did we just not move him up a tech track? I think we I think we missed a piece there. Uh, yeah, the speed the of the seven. play. Yeah, I, I think don't think it will end up it won't, impacting yeah. anything. It won't impact anything. The uh, the additional uh, power coming from that is not something that uh, <laughs> that the Ivets care about. Yeah, but at least you know, <laughs> Vlad still has that splendor ring. I think he's wearing it right now. The Splendor, Splendor Championship ring. Honestly, the, from everybody who I've talked to, like making it to the finals, semifinals is great. But being able to walk away with one of those, like Sorry. one of those rings, and have those that bragging rights forever, that's the that's, that's the real absolutely charity. Absolutely correct. 
Yeah, absolutely yeah. correct. Yeah. It is uh, no, no, no. You could have just been awesome. Been you know, you win one of those rings, it's uh, it's unbelievably I mean, cool. Or if you're, if you're um, Nick and Gray, you win two of them, then uh, no yeah. one knows what that's like but those two. But uh, I guess David now, two and, different years. And, uh, and uh, Levi. Levi. Yeah, yeah and two Levi. different years. They have the different set collection. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'll no, ask I did, you, Cliff. I what, what would you prefer, a guy project ring or ten thousand dollars? You got both. <laughs> <sighs> I, I mean, well, you, grass is always greener, right? I want the, <laughs> I want the bracelet and the twenty-five and the lifetime uh, yeah. invite back. You know, Just, <laughs> I, I couldn't 100%. ask for more. I was so fortunate on on how things went the first year for me. It was really awesome. Uh, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't disappointed not to win the whole thing. You For know? sure. Yeah, of you, course. You of course. Uh, but yeah, I think I think the ring, even though financially it's not worth as much as ten thousand, yeah. because I won it in Gaia Project because that was the game I went yeah. to play. Yeah. All those reasons that the ring, you know, meant more to me in that yeah. in that yeah. way. For and, sure. And the money is awesome. It, it funds what ten more trips. To yeah. The <laughs> exactly. But it, yeah, yeah. I you got a ten year pass. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. That's what it was. See, we see Hans walking around behind these guys. I didn't know you get a VIP uh, watch the finals live if you win the thing. I didn't know I missed out on another thing for for getting second. I don't think that's official. I think Hans was like, I really want to see, and we were like, well, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> All right, here we go. William we finally go. getting to William do his super it. good thing that we knew he was going to do. So he's covering a tile, which is something you do when you get an advanced tech. Uh, and he should go up on a track. I think he went up on Gaia with it. Again, mm-hmm. I, w- I wanted to see him go up on get the Lost Planet also, get another free planet, then use his knowledge to go up on purple and flip all those feds. So Angela's doing the the triple trading post. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. I think I wonder if if Angela's just playing fast. If she's like, you know, this is my Fed. This is the quickest way I can get it done. Yeah. I know we're on a time crunch. Oh, here we go with Vlad playing a good green cube. Get those action. QIC. Yeah, he's gonna retap his six his six money federation. So essentially, uh, he's making nine points from the federation mm-hmm. right now. And if he uses those resources or not. That's good. And he still has QICs, so he can potentially take the uh, the other action also, which may have been Mikhail's plan because he can charge four. And then he can make a green, uh, but he won't be able to beat Vlad to that action if, if he so desires. Mm-hmm. Oh, Mikhail charged four, but I think he only moved three, and then he didn't uh, spend it. Well, I think he had to move them from uh, from bowl one. Did he have one and one? Yeah, I think he had one and one. I saw them go up. Then where I also like this this point of any game where you know what your plans are final you're finally executing on your plans. You know, you have those small little race battles, but at this point you know what everybody else is kind of doing and you go, Okay, we can I I do totally agree. Yeah. I like that. Oh, uh, Vlad, I think he already had two QAC and now he, he got a, another one which he didn't need, so now Mikhail, we know he takes things that uh, other people need. He's gonna take ore. <laughs> oh, he, he goes for ore. ore. Yeah, needs yeah. To I think I buildings. think he could have he could have converted that into a QIC and taken the QIC action as well. Uh, and William's gonna make a free QIC, and then what? Take his personal action. I don't know. He's gonna build out there for just more buildings. See. Yeah. This is this is exactly what I'm talking about. He's building another building to compete on right. winning buildings. But if he just spends two QIC, it's worth more than the three yeah. to six points, you know. For him, it might be worth the same because he's only on green, white, and blue. Yeah. So it might be the same. If he if he actually beats everybody else on total buildings, it's worth, you know, an extra six. Yeah, because he's going he's gonna to be going up on that Gaia, Gaia track. 
hitting that final stage and getting those points for yep an extra point up there they moved him back one though for total buildings they they must have recounted and got him to a different total angela's making a federation and she's gonna take which one is it seven points she hasn't taken that yet right or sorry she, she's gonna take 12 points she's gonna take a green she also had two QIC and didn't spend mm. it. Nobody likes my QIC action, <laughs> apparently. I think I think uh, I think the time pressure is probably making players forget about it. If yeah, you know, yeah, it hasn't that... been in play for most of the game, and yeah. and so with the focus on okay, I'm going to do my goal. Also, knowing that they're going to have to go right into the final as well. They're the last. They're the yep. last turn. They're the last game. We're going to draw the final. Maybe scarf a piece of pizza, yeah. and then uh, and then go into whatever game it may be. Luckily, players don't have to worry about it being uh, Gaia Project or Arc Nova <laughs> um, because they're in the in the semifinals. Um, but uh, yeah, no no player has had to worry about vetoing Gaia Project, which is the I, in my <laughs> opinion the obvious veto. <laughs> Maybe it's just because that's what I would have vetoed, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that's uh, Tom Vassell said that to me a couple times. You know, yeah. like it'll never make a final because no yeah. one's ever gonna let it get there. Hundred percent. I use it as my example whenever running a regional qualifier. I say, if you're not that good at Gaia Project, you can veto Gaia Project because <laughs> it's it's kind of assumed. All right, so here he's getting Williams getting to the top of the purple like we knew he was gonna. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's going to be a lot of points. Again, I, I still think it's a two-person race between Angela mm -hmm. and William. And he could have gotten a green cube from his, his action. No one was racing him on that, right? He had the whole time to do that. Yeah. If he gets the, the QIC and converts and takes that action, no, Angela's not going to take it either. So she needed it for or She needed QIC yeah. for or. Nope. And she's gonna take seven instead of whatever sure it was like six yeah. for yeah. her. So yeah, especially because she, she didn't get it before before going up on that uh, on that blue, because McKeel was uh, was had a potential of pushing that ten oh point my gosh. first. Does she have a way to get another knowledge? Because she's sitting at three. If she got to four, she could get the lost planet. And she'd, she'd cap out four tracks. I don't know if I've ever seen one player at the top of four tracks. Wow. <laughs> yeah, how... Well, she doesn't have the power to do it. No, yeah. I don't think there's a way for her to get one knowledge. Not one like she can re-tap. Uh, that would be pretty exciting. <laughs> that would be next level. Uh, she doesn't have enough resources to build another yeah. building that gets her a tactile. She doesn't have enough QIC to make the... Yeah. to take a tactile. But just real quick, she took the seven point. Of course, seven point in the last round, mm -hmm. strong tile, no doubt about it. But she was on yellow, green, orange, brown, and three points. So if she, but she passes for points for the for the science for the, building as well. Yeah. So it's like a little more. It's ten points instead of seven, because just the two QIC was seven points yeah. as well. Pretty much one of these players needs to take that action, so I stopped talking about it, I think, is the <laughs> the new goal. They I all got think, I don't point. think we're seeing it. Maybe Vlado will. Maybe he's he's got his hands hovering around the QIC. He was the one who took the other one. That's on Vlado's radar. Yeah. I think Has he, he been listening in to our commentary? <laughs> oh man, if William had found a way to do it. William also is the only one who's not gonna have the seven pointer, huh? Right. So he's got a ton of points and just like just here and there, right? Here and there, mm -hmm. just every little bit and another another point, another couple of points, you know. Yeah, with all the with all the green could have picked up another uh another few, but but again it changes everything, right? The textiles are also important. William wouldn't have got been able to federate as quickly, although I don't think it might have mattered that much for him. No, yeah, I think I think that that thing actually cost him buildings and fed, right? Mm -hmm. Being strength four and and how everything played out, uh, he did get the federations earlier, 
and maybe if there had been more pressure on him. But again, it's that yeah. kind of like we said, Angela did a great job of reading the board. And William just like, well, I need to get these things done. I've got this plan. And and had he waited and things played out the same, which you never know. Yeah, which you never know. Uh, it it was more points to. Uh, what's he counting here? Just how many resources he has left? He hasn't taken his personal QIC action to from his uh, from his big science academy. Mm-hmm. If you build the one on the right, you do unlock a, an action you can take to take a QIC. And Mickey did do it, so he he should know that he can do it. Uh, I think Mickey got on a ton of colors, but he made too many buildings. He he can't. Yeah. Uh, it's it's too big for a federation. Four, five, six, seven. So he also doesn't have the satellites to chain it up that big anyway. Yeah. He's just going to do the closest ones. So he was just trying to compete in buildings. Again, these guys all spent a lot of resources to, to be, you know, third on buildings or yeah. to be, it, it just didn't make them the points I think they were hoping for. Yeah. And like I said, I think if you're interested in getting better at your Gaia project game, that's, that's a place you can, identify as when is it correct to invest on the end game and yeah. when is when is when am i going out of my way for points that are really negligible it's a sneaky thing right because you when whenever the game is being taught you say okay these are the end game goals right these are things that you can focus on here are some points you can pick up along the way and then you'll say oh and you also get four points for every time you go up on a tech track and think well oh i'm i've you realize how hard it is to go up on tech tracks if you're not investing in knowledge and then you say oh well, i'm never getting those points anyway uh, but yeah. then you you see someone like angela who's almost at the top of all four like four of the tech tracks and you realize oh okay what well, the one game you get you get smoked soundly by somebody investing in tech you realize <laughs> its yeah, importance. Yeah, that, that I think that's an arc that every Gaia player, pro, Gaia project player, has to go through. Uh, and because you can pick up so much, right? Like that's the difference. It's 18 points, sure, but you get to top of one of these tracks. That's 12. Yeah. And maybe yeah, you exactly. come third. And it's and it's really not 18 because it's yeah. only 18 over one player. Yeah. Uh, but I get it. Yeah. Maybe just even the name end game goal. You hear mm-hmm. it and you're like end game goal. Okay, that's. That's a lot. So William ended up with 12 resources at the end. So the green cube didn't matter to him when he, when he passed, he's going to have, you know, a a division divisible by three amount, Mm -hmm. which is, which is all that matters. So one more resource wouldn't have made a difference for him. Angela spent two resources. Yeah. And also passes. The tiebreaker at WSBG is who passes first. So if you can cut an action out like that, if it, if it's efficient to do it, and you believe in the tiebreaker, uh, Vlad is going to take the fourth on the, one of the last turns of the game. He's going to spend what is essentially a point and a third of a point to pick up two points now and then another two points when he moves up. So he's turning it into... Mm-hmm. And then he has to go up Gaia because that's going to turn into another four, which doesn't feel great. Oh, did they? They didn't move him for picking up the tactile. Mikhail takes the takes the action that everybody's been talking about. <laughs> he did set himself up for it. He built on like every color. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. That's that's a lot of points. It's so efficient. Two QIC for lots of points. It's it's real good. And I appreciate too, Vlado and Mikhail taking pretty rapid fire turns here. They know they know they're they're pretty much out of it. They know it's between yeah. William and Angela, and they're just they're just finishing it out as best they can uh, to to move the game along. And Angela's sitting on six three, so we know Angela's getting two points from resources, mm-hmm. which will put her to ninety. We know that. William's getting four points in resources, which will put him to 105. 105. So he's going to, with just resources, he's going to have a 15-point lead going into the end of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then, depending on who wins the different sections, so now uh, Brown has 
No. Yellow is winning buildings and fed, and blue second, so she makes up six there. Uh, there's a big cluster for buildings, total buildings. That's just a mess. Mm-hmm. Uh, so everybody's going to, like, tie on points there. Yeah. So it's going to be, like, 15 to 9. You know, 15, 15, 9, 9. Yeah. So. A good, I mean, a good break if you're in the lead and you want to extend that. It's better than having third place tie is better than having your, like, it, it, Angela, like, Mikhail tying Angela there is really beneficial for William as well, right? That if, if Angela's yes. just in, in third, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a it's another minus three, um, but then then it's going to come down to tech, which we know Angela did really well. Uh, and and again, what's interesting is so Angela's four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty four, twenty eight, thirty two, thirty six, forty, forty four. That's an amazing yeah. tech tech score versus Williams four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty. So she's going to make 24 points, and she's down by the the 15, like we said. Yeah. So that's going to be the difference is she's going to get it in the tech tracks. And if William had gone up, had taken the money fed instead of the 12-point fed, then when he took the uh, the top, the fed federation at the top of navigation for points he could have moved up for the lost planet that would have won him uh total buildings he would have won alone so that's another three and he would have gotten four right. more on the tech so just that one move is is a potential could be could be the difference yeah yeah i think it is the difference from just the math i'm doing right here mm-hmm Oh my gosh, that's so it's that's that so close. awesome for someone who's so yeah. like inexperienced at the game, and it's, then and, like so heartbreaking. A, yeah, it's a real testament to to William's skill as like an all around gamer, you know. Absolutely, yeah. I'm um, I don't need to play any more games with him. He's proven <laughs> enough to me. <laughs> all these players, all these players have shown shown yeah. their skill. Oh, yeah, because you moved up twice. Yeah. So, so that's four points. Four points total. But very, very close. Very close game of guy project. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, they're making sure to, to score those points on the on that tech tile that Vlado bought of moving up. And getting him. He's making another fed now for... So... I don't know if Angela's telling him that they can't do that if it doesn't make a new yeah. level of fed. Yeah, I, I didn't count his stuff, but 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I think Josh said 23. I'm seeing, I at a quick count, I think it's 25. And yeah, she's right. He's already at 21. And those two don't make it big enough to get over the edge. Yeah. Uh, and he doesn't have enough resources to make to make the, the difference. So he's just going to pass here. Yeah, Angela wants to point that out because that uh, she doesn't want people surpassing her. Uh, for can, So but. buildings and fed... Uh, would have, let's see, one, two. It actually would have helped Angela. I think she was oh, yeah. just being honest because it, it would have knocked William back another level uh, if, if Vlad had passed him. Uh, she would have won it anyway, even if he added those two. Again, Angela's been pretty consistent this whole game, just pointing those sorts of things out. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Great sportsmanship, but also get it played correctly, right? Like, why, yeah. why not? You, that seems that's, like a good deal. That's, that's what you want to do. You want to win You want to win the right way. I feel like everybody at WSBG feels that way. And and if my math is correct, I think she did. But they'll add it up. We'll find out. Yeah, they're just doing a double check of all the federations right now. Josh is also, doing the count. Also important, yeah, definitely you want to make sure. Uh, I know at our tables we ask for this kind of as each person passes. You know, let's make sure these these things are really correct because yeah. if you're making a decision to build another building or not. Yeah. Uh, Brown, eight. Eight, that's what I have. Okay, red. 
Oh, yeah. look, we got Shane, we got Brian, we got John, all of them in the shot sharing it with Vlad there. <laughs> excited to see what happens and excited to see who's moving on in that final spot in the finals. I, I like that Shane and Brian are excited and, and like games, and, and John just looks like he's been up all week. <laughs> John John uh, is expends the most energy, I think, out of anybody at the at Oh, the tournament. he does, man. He's got a lot of energy going on. He's got a, such a positive vibe. It's good stuff for sure. All right, so they've added up Vlad. Yeah. I think they've, they've done all their passing, and now what are we doing? We're taking... Taking the end game goals, I think. We're doing the end game scoring here. So this is this is just the resources. This is the numbers mm -hmm. we were at after resources. And now we're gonna do end game goals. Yeah. And so we're gonna move everybody the correct amount of spaces for their end game goals. And so we've decided eighteen and twelve and six are in three and three. Yeah. Yeah. So they tied. But then Angela gets eighteen there. Yeah, fifteen fifteen to three does feel like a pretty a pretty decent gap. Especially when you're William and uh the your opponent is getting three. Right. Yeah, that, that helped him, but he could have got even more, right? Because yeah. he could have had the lost planet. And so he got fifteen here to her eighteen, so he only missed out on our sorry, or, or six, 12 eighteen to and her. twelve. Yeah. yeah, so he only, only missed, missed out, out on six. Right and made up a, a bunch on the other end. So that worked out pretty well. Yeah, William's going to pick up 20 points here. And so that'll be his end game score. And 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So 152 is a little low for an end game. And then we're going to go Angela. 44 bump. Is 44 from 111. Should be 145. Oh. One, two, wow, you right. can see the shocked expression on John and Shane's face in the in the yeah, video it's covered as well. They they know that's so like, tight. That's wow. all the points, you know. That's it. Yeah. So it's one forty-five to one, uh, or sorry, one fifty-five to one fifty-two. Wow. So a three point, and he passed first, so kind of a two point. Uh, wow. Good job, Rush. That's amazing. That's amazing. Those tech tracks. Wow. Oh, man. Yeah, he. With the Lost Planet. The Lost Planet. Yeah. But so good. So good wow. from across the board. And such a good. Such a good game of Gaia Project for people who, who don't play it very often. Yeah. Had, hadn't had a lot of experience with it. Learned it the night before, really. Uh, at least yeah. at a high end level. I, I really think I think Mikhail kind of came in with the idea to play Taclons ahead of time, and I think a lot of the things he did were really good, and the board position was just not recoverable. Yeah, that was my read on it anyway. So Mikhail picking up third place and Vlado in fourth place, but Angela Tao moving on into the finals. If you want to go watch that final, you can. It was streamed live on Dice Tower. It was a game of splendor. For $25,000, <laughs> Vlado being represented in, in the finals, um, everybody vetoing the the larger games that were left in the competition. Great Western Trail, Terraforming Mars was out, uh, and I think one other thing got vetoed, but I can't remember right now. Um, what a game! Wow, I can't believe it was that close. Oh, I can't believe that it was that close. I mean, I I know there were some. So we were we were commenting on the efficiencies, th those things that we noticed a little bit from William, but I'm sure there were there were some from from every player that we just didn't didn't comment on or 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 pick apart right. But uh, just a really really exciting game. That was really tight. That was really awesome. tight. Yeah. Wow. Good game. Good to all them. Good job to Josh to sit through. Mm -hmm. That's his uh his fourth Gaia. <laughs> Gaia <to> yeah. <laughs> guy. Yeah, that's uh that was that was quite the game. Well, and and hey, if you made it this far into the stream, if you've watched this whole thing, I know what type of board gamer you are. And you belong at the World Series of Board Gaming. It's just just flat out. Just flat yep. out you do. Like, you're our people. <laughs> um, we'll see you in Vegas. It's going to be a, a freaking great time. For tickets, you can, you can go to WSPGVegas.com and get your ticket. There's a, there's a ticket tier for everyone. If you want to just dip your toe into it, play in the smaller tournaments in the outer ring, or just do open gaming, you know, come join us in Vegas. Uh, 
Cliff, that was a friggin' blast. Thank you for your time and imparting all of that awesome Gaia knowledge. Like it was, yeah, it was, it was awesome. <laughs> no, it was awesome. It was, it was like, I was enthralled that, that flew by to me. It really, I'm always surprised by like how, how, how fast time flies when, uh, when I'm doing these sorts of things, because you get so involved in playing the game yourself, right. And watching what's oh, yeah. happening. Oh yeah, from each seat, it's even more than when you're playing it from your own seat. Yeah, because you're only looking at your own stuff. But when you're playing from everybody's seat, yeah, you get to see a lot of different layers. So mm -hmm. it's awesome. Hundred percent. Well, thank you all for watching. Um, again, go to for tickets. Go to wspgvegas.com. I think we have one more game Vlado's game the game of splendor the the ring final of splendor is what we will finish out with uh on we should be releasing that on dice tower next week um but yeah and, and tune into the world series of board gaming youtube channel for additional additional coverage we've been doing some strategy guides over there to give you some tips on how to approach some of these games if you're unfamiliar with them um cliff you got anything else to say before signing off no, thanks so much for having me. And yeah, I hope we do see everybody in Vegas. That'll be fun. Yeah, awesome. So thanks, everybody, and have yourself a great day.